Am I audible? Am I audible, everyone? Quickly give me a heads up. Am I audible? Is the audio video clear to all? I am good. I am doing good. Harish, is the audio video clear to all? Quickly give me a heads up. Chalo. Yes. Okay. Chalo, can we go ahead and start the class, everyone? Can we go ahead and start the class? I want everyone to give me a heads up. Yes, sir, we can do it. Yes, okay. Chalo, till everyone joins in. Till everyone joins in. Quickly tell me everyone, how are you all doing? How's everything going? How's the preparation going? How's the preparation going everyone? Chalo. Let's go ahead and start the class, everyone. Before, before we go ahead, before we go ahead and start the class, before we go ahead and start the class, I welcome you all again. I welcome you all to this, uh, to Ramesh Sony classes and to this amendment series, <laughs> to this amendment series. We are going to revise, we are going to not revise today, we are going to study all the amendments in detail. Yes, everyone? Yes, we are going to study the amendments in detail. I hope all of you have downloaded the amendment material which I have right, uh, right now with me. If you have not downloaded, please go to rameshsoni.com, free resources, May 22 folder, you will find this statutory update. Please download it quickly. Right, everyone? Cholo, <clears throat> now with this quick thing, let me go ahead and start the class. Let me go ahead and start the class now. The first thing first, sir, this amendment is for whom? This amendment series which we are starting today, not the series, might be will be able to finish it in one class today. We'll be able to, this amendment series is going to be applicable for each and every student who is going to write their exam in the May 22 attempt, May or CS, uh, CMS student, for them it is June, right everyone? So, now, sir, this is the amendment uh, module which you, I have provided, yes. Now, the first thing first, sir, amendments applicable for May 22. So, if you are a student who has taken my classes, might be for December 21 or earlier attempt, these amendments are for you if you are writing your exam in the May 22 attempt. Now, everyone over here, sir, from when ka when amendment is applicable for us? If your exam is in May 22, May 22, six months before ka amendments are applicable for you. So, if I go ahead and say over here, the amendments which happened, the amendments which happened between 1st of May 2021 till 31st of October 2021 all the circulars notifications which have come in between these six months are applicable to you guys so we will be today studying all the amendments now listen to me carefully this amendment material which I have gone ahead and prepared I have gone ahead and checked the ICI material. ICI has released the material which are applicable for your May 22 exam. Those material may, what are the changes the ICI has done? Those changes I have gone ahead and incorporated over here. Secondly, the ICI has also released a statutory update material. The statutory update material may, whatever amendments they have gone ahead and covered, I have gone ahead and covered over there. 
However, in the statutory update material also, very few amendments are there which they have not gone ahead and covered. So those amendments I have also not gone ahead and covered except few which I found that might be it's an omission on their part and might be they will be going ahead and releasing those amendments along with the RTP. So along with the RTP, if I go ahead and see later that they have gone ahead and by chance release some extra amendments, those amendments also don't worry about it. I will be providing you guys. But as of now, not to make it burdensome, burdensome for all of you, I will be going ahead and covering those amendments which are there in the material plus those amendments which the ICI has specifically specifically gone ahead and told in the statutory update material that these are applicable for the students writing in May 22 exam. Is that clear to all? Quickly give me a heads up so that I know that the stream is working and everyone is there in the class. Yes, people, quickly give me a heads up. Is the point clear to all? Can we go ahead and now start with the amendments with this quick clarification? Yes, I want everyone to give me a heads up. Yes, sir. We are clear with what is being told now. Chalo. So by chance, if the ICI goes ahead and later releases any new amendment material or any addition or in the RTP, they go ahead and try to cover anything extra that also will go ahead and cover. Don't worry about it. But as of now, that's it, which we have to go ahead and cover everyone over here now. Now, first of all, the index, if you guys go ahead and see the index over here, if you guys go ahead and see the index over here in the index, after every amendment, you will be able to see that there is a crux which is written. This index will be helping you one day before the exam or might be one hour before the exam just to quickly glance through all the amendments which have happened. Now, I'll tell you one simple thing. Baba, the amendments which are there, the amendments which are there are very, very few. Don't worry at all about it. I am there. Don't worry. Just relax and we are going to enjoy now. Chalo. So index we'll be seeing at the end of the class, we'll quickly run through the index so that uh, we see, are we able to see the index and understand everything. But my guarantee, everyone, we are going to just relax in the class and just keep listening. Aram se sit in the class, aram se listen. Everyone over here now, please come to your amendments. The first first amendment is there in the chapter of registration. Before I go ahead and start with the amendment in the chapter of registration, I would like to first of all give you a quick linking. Do you guys remember everyone? Do you guys remember our GST ka flow? GST ka flow. We will go, we'll go with our systematic flow. How we learn GST the same way we'll be learning the amendment also. I hope you guys remember the first thing we learn in GST is goods or service yes sir baba the definition of goods and service we go ahead and learn first in the definition first chapter the basic there is no amendment now the goods and service ka definition goods and service ka definition mein, there is no amendment sir goods and service has to be supplied supply chapter there is no amendment at all goods and service has to be supplied supply i hope you guys remember can be either interstate supply or it can be intrastate supply. Yes, sir. We do remember the nature of supply chapter, which you had gone ahead and taught over here. The third chapter is the nature of supply chapter. In nature of supply chapter, there is no amendment. Once goods and services are supplied, inter or intra, interstate, then IGST is levied. Intrastate, then CGST is levied. Baba, GST ka levy ka chapter comes next. GST ka levy. That is, sir, IGST is levied under section number 5. CGST is levied under section number 9. There is no amendment, no addition over here. Then, sir, in between you had gone ahead and told some people ask for composition levy. Composition levy chapter, there is no amendment. Now, so goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Inter or intra, GST shall be levied. Once GST is levied, the next comes, sir, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. I hope you guys remember taxable person we had gone ahead and discussed in section number 22 section number 22 told about people who are liable to take registration 23 people who are not liable 24 compulsory registration no amendments 25 no amendment 26 27 28 29 also no amendment the amendment comes in section number 30 now everyone 
in section number 30, not in section number 30, actually the amendment is made in section number 30 was read with one rule. Section number 30 was read with rule number 23 over here, rule number, <coughs> read with rule number 23. Now in rule number 23, they have gone ahead and made a small amendment. Please come to the first, first amendment over here everyone. Now. In the registration chapter, rule number 23, they have gone ahead and made a small amendment. See over here, I have gone ahead and written the analysis of the amendment. First, we will read the analysis, then the crux, and then you, you will be able to see that we have already covered the amendment. Number one, with effect from 1st of January 2021, it means in the previous in the previous amendment or might be in the class, I had already gone ahead and covered that section number 30 may they had gone ahead and made one small amendment. What did they say? Section, uh, provision to section number 30 was substituted to permit extension. There was a provision for extension which was being provided once your registration is cancelled. Everyone, once your registration was cancelled under section number 29, you can go ahead and ask for revocation of cancellation. Yes, sir, we remember revocation of cancellation means we can apply to the officer. Here, the time limit was only 30 days. And in section number 30, they had gone ahead and made a change wherein you can go ahead and ask the additional commissioner or joint commissioner or the commissioner. So additional commissioner or joint commissioner can go ahead and extend the time limit by 30 days and commissioner can extend the time limit by further 30 days. So you have to go ahead and apply for a revocation of cancellation of registration within how many days? 30 days. Additional commissioner or joint commissioner can extend by further 30 days. And commissioner can go ahead and extend the time limit by further 30 days. Now, this amendment they had gone ahead and done in section number 30. However, section number 30 is read with rule number 23 which tells how to do. And in rule number 30, they did not write this amendment. Now, they have gone ahead and written the same thing in rule number, th uh, rule number 23. So section number 30 ka amendment, they have just gone ahead and incorporated in rule number 33. Baba, consequence of amendment, earlier also for you, the extension could be provided by additional commissioner or joint commissioner by 30 days, commissioner by further 30 days. If you want to apply for revocation of cancellation, the same remains, there is no amendment at all. Only thing, they have gone ahead and incorporated the change which happened in section number 30 in the rule also. So now in the rule they have gone ahead and written that sir, a registered person whose registration is cancelled under section number 29 may submit an application in GST REG 21 to such proper officer means his proper officer within how many days? 30 days from the date of the service of the order of cancellation. Now sir, if you want to apply for extension means you could not apply for revocation within 30 days then further or within such time period as extended by additional commissioner or joint commissioner or the commissioner as the case may be. So now you can apply for revocation within 30 days plus additional time limit which is allowed by additional commissioner, joint commissioner or the commissioner. Yes, everyone. So the net effect of the amendment, if you see over here, it's just a consequential amendment which had already happened in section number 30. Now they have just gone ahead and written in the law. In rule number 23, they have gone ahead and written. So if you see over here, the amended chart also have gone ahead and given. Section number 29, there is no amendment. Section number 30, section number 30, read with rule number 23. Now, sir, you can apply for extension within 30 days or within, sir, further or extended time period which is being allowed or extended time period which is being allowed, which can be further extended by 30 days and by further 30 days, which will be allowed by the commissioner. Is everyone clear with the first first amendment which you have understood over here? Quickly give me a heads up. Are you clear with the first first amendment? I want a heads up from everyone before going ahead. Quick, quick, quick everyone quickly tell me is this point clear to all? Yes, sir. We are all clear. Quickly give me a heads up. Yes, sir. Everyone is clear with the first amendment. Quick. Chalo. Now, the next amendment comes in the chapter of exemption. Everyone over here. In the, in the flow, in the flow, if you see, once goods and service 
is being supplied. Supply can be either intrastate or interstate. Sir, intra or intra, G intra or inter GST will be levied. One GST was levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. But here, in between, came one chapter, and the chapter ka name was exemption. Sir, I don't have to collect GST and pay to the government if I am falling in an exemption. So, if I am falling in an exemption, I will not collect and pay. Now, in the exemption chapter, there is a small amendment, not there is a small amendment, there are few small amendments which they have gone ahead and made. Let's understand exemptions. Everyone over here. If you guys remember, if you guys remember entry number 1, entry number 90, entry number 80, entry number 13, entry number 74, one thing common, one thing common in all the entry was there, they were going ahead and providing exemption to those entities which are registered under 12AA of the Income Tax Act. So, entity which were registered under 12AA of the Income Tax Act, they were being provided exemption. I hope you guys remember. Now, you know what happened. In Income Tax Act, in Income Tax Act, there is a small amendment which happened. Finance Act 2022 inserted one section in the Income Tax Act, section number 12AB. Section number 12AB was inserted by Finance Act 2020 saying that now if charitable institutions want to claim income tax exemption instead of taking registration under 12AA they have to take registration under 12AB now because in the income tax for income tax exemption for charitable institution they have gone ahead and told that 12AB section may you have to take registration 12AA and 12A now instead of that they have to take registration under 12AB of the Income Tax Act to get exemption as a charitable institution or an, as an entity which is registered under, which is a charitable entity. Now, because in the Income Tax Act, they have inserted the word 12AB instead of 12A. Now, under income tax, people are going to take registration under 12AB. So, for those charitable institutions, they have gone ahead and made a consequential amendment in the indirect tax also in the gst also they have gone ahead and told either you are registered under 12 aa or you are registered under 12 ab if you are going ahead if you are going ahead and doing charitable activities or you are running an old age home or you are renting the precincts of a religious place or you are doing giving training or coaching in recreational activity or services provided by rehabilitation center baba for all of them earlier the word used was 12 aa now they have gone ahead and used either you are registered under 12 aa or you are registered under 12 ab of the income tax act this you will be you will you can go ahead and claim exemption in gst also so they have just gone ahead and added the word 12 ab over here if you guys can see 12 aa and 12 ab also word has been inserted this is just because of the constitutional amendment which has happened in income tax act so in the exam you see 12 aa or you see 12 ab be very careful baba those are entities which are exempted under income tax and hence in the gst also they have been provided the exemption quickly give me a heads up see over here everyone the quickly give me a heads up are we all clear with this amendment the word 12 ab added alongside 12 aa to bring exemption notification in line with the changes in the income tax act whatever changes happened in the income tax act because of that they have gone ahead and brought 12 ab in the exemption over here also in besides 12 a they've just gone ahead and inserted the word 12 a b yes sir we are all clear with this let's go ahead so for all the four for all one two three four five this ex uh, exemptions which were there earlier the word used was 12 a a now i've gone ahead and added the word 12 a b also yes sir we are all clear the amended chart is also over here so 12 a a or 12 a b if an entity registered under 12 AA or 12 AB and going ahead and doing these activities, Baba, their activity shall be exempted. Chalo. Now, everyone over here, in the next page, you will be able to see, in the next page, you will be able to see some circular. Now, these circulars 
are not being covered in the ICI ka statutory update. But I believe that they might go ahead and later say that these are some of the circulars which you have to cover. So these are small, small circulars which are being issued. As a general knowledge also, CA final student should know it. So I've gone ahead and covered quickly. Everyone over here. It says clarification regarding GST on supply of various services by center and state board. Baba, all these boards which are there, central board which is there, state boards which are there. Basically, you go ahead and write your 10th, 12th ka exam. No, with the state board, uh, central board which are there. Now, the central board and the state boards go ahead and collect an amount from the student when you go ahead and write your exam. So, when you are writing your 10th, 12th ka exam, you go ahead and pay a small fees to the central board and state boards. If you read your exemption notification number 6, uh, exemption notification, nahi baba. Uh, when you read your entry number 66, in your entry number 66, you will see that they are considered as educational institutions for the purpose of taking all these exams and all. Now, what the clarification has come is, see, services provided by center board, state board by way of conducting exam. You wrote your 10th exam, 12th exam, they have gone ahead and charged your fees. The service which is provided by the center board, state boards, etc., for which they are going ahead and charging your small fees shall be exempted. There will be no GST on that. That's it. Now, secondly, so taxability of various services provided by center and state board, such as national board of examination. These services include entrance exam on charging a fees for admission to educational institution. If you want to get into educational institution, first you have to write the board ka exam. Now, when you go to write the board ka exam, you have to pay small fees. That board fees which you pay will be exempted from GST. Basically, the services which are provided by the state board and central board shall be exempted from GST. The next one. Now, the central board and state boards go ahead and provide you the service. To provide you the service, they go ahead and take various input services like question paper printing, all this admit card printing, various services are being taken by them. They, they have gone ahead and clarified that when the center board, state boards, etc. are providing the services, those are also exempt. And whatever input services they take to provide all these services, those input services shall also be exempted. The next one is input services for conducting such entrance exam for student. The input services can be like such as online test services, result publication, printing of notification for exam, printing of admit card, question papers, etc. When printed by such board, they shall also be exempt. So if I am a state board or I am a central board, when I go ahead and conduct exam, that service, ke liye, whatever fees I am charging, that service shall be exempted. Secondly, I will take printing services, many services I will take to provide this exam, to uh, make these exams happen. All those input services, whenever somebody is providing to me, those services pay, that person also will not charge me any GST. The next one over here is, Accreditation of educational institution. Now you will see the state boards, etc., which is there. The state board, which is there. The state board can under many educational institution take accreditation. Many educational institution, many institution take accreditation, accredited to this institute, accredited, accredited to this board, accredited to this board. The boards go ahead and provide accreditation services. Now, for this accreditation services or any other services which are other than conduct of examination which are provided by the central board or the state board are well within GST. They are taxable. Everyone see over here. Other services provided by the board providing accreditation to an institution or professional shall be always taxable. So what is the crux? The crux is simple. If I am a state board or I am a center board, I am going ahead and, and conducting examination for the student. Those services pay whatever amount I charge. I will not go ahead and charge any GST for those services. If I take input services, the other person who is providing me input services with respect to this conduct of examination, etc., they will also not go ahead and charge GST. But if I am going ahead and providing any other services like accreditation services uh, where we charge a amount and give accreditation to institution, they, for those services, GST will come. Those are taxable. Is the circular clear to all? Yes, sir. We are all clear with the circular. Let's go ahead. Now, the next circular which is there, the next circular which is there is regarding supply of food in Anganwadis and schools. Now, everyone, 
सर्कुलर रिगार्डिंग एप्लीकेबिलिटी ऑफ जीएसटी ऑन सप्लाई ऑफ फूड इन आंगनवाड़ी एंड स्कूल नाउ आई टेल यू वट है यू नो दिस आंगनवाड़ी आर बींग रन इन स्मॉल विलेजेस एक्सेट्रा वेर वट है मील इज बींग प्रोवाइडेड मिड डे मील इज बींग प्रोवाइडेड नाउ दिस मिड डे मील विच इज देयर इज समाइम स्पॉन्सर्ड बाई द गवर्नमेंट समटाइम स्पॉन्सर्ड बाई अदर्स माइट बी ए कॉर्पोरेट इज देयर they have gone ahead and sponsored the meal which is being provided in the anganwadis to the student basically mid day meal is being provided to the student in the anganwadis now this meal which is there this meal can be provided by whom government or this meal can be provided by whom corporates corporates can also go ahead and sponsor the meal and the services will be provided in the anganwadis baba whether sponsored by government whether sponsored by corporates the services shall be exempt everyone let's see over here whether services of food in school under mid day meal scheme would be exempt if such supplies are funded by government grants and or corporate donation baba whether sponsored by government mid day meals are being sponsored by government then also it is exempted mid day meal being sponsored by corporate then also it is exempted services provided to an educational institution so a one person is there he is going ahead and providing food in that school services provided to an educational institution by way of serving of food catering includes mid day meal and it is always exempted from gst irrespective of its funding from central government from government grants or by corporates and anganwadi provides pre school non formal education educational institution includes an anganwadi and whenever somebody is providing this catering services to the anganwadi whether that was being sponsored by whom corporate or being sponsored by the government it shall be exempted serving of food to anganwadi is also covered in the exemption whether sponsored by government or it is being uh sponsored by the corporates okay everyone chalo the next one everyone swati we are talking about boards we are not talking about ici we are not talking about the ici over here chalo let's go ahead next the next entry over here the next entry over here is the entry number 19a 19b i hope you guys remember transportation services transportation of goods by aircraft from custom station in india or transportation of goods by a vessel from custom station in india both both ke liye always remember earlier this exemption was till 30th september 2021 now this exemption has been extended till 30 30th of september 2022 this exemption was also there earlier now this exemption is just being extended till 2022 if you see the exemption ka chart over here transportation services mein air se international transportation transportation of goods by air basically from india to outside india was exempt till 30th september 2021 now the exemption has been extended till 30th september 2022 next sir transportation of goods by vessel from india outside india was exempted till 30th september 2021 now extended till 30th september 2022 that's it there is no amendment at all earlier also this amendment was continuing earlier also this exemption was there now the exemption just continues chalo one more small amendment means a new entry entry number 61a has been inserted sir what is 61a telling baba granting of national permit you will see in the trucks etc it is written national permit national permit have you seen in the trucks yes sir we have gone ahead and seen in the truck it is written national permit baba those national permits which are given which are given by the government to this goods carriages goods carriages means trucks always remember national permits are given to whom national permits given to goods carriages to operate throughout india or to operate in contiguous states sir what do you mean by contiguous state for an example if i go ahead and tell assam over here besides assam you will see arunachal pradesh is there you will see meghalaya is there you will see sir mizoram is there sir you will see over here nagaland is there so these are the contiguous states so if the government is going ahead and giving a goods carriage co nas national permit or a permit to operate in contiguous state means the states which share a common border 
for that also if a permit has been given for that permit whatever fees is being charged there will be no gst that's all everyone services by way of granting national permit to a goods carriage to operate throughout india or in contiguous state contiguous state means one state ka around there are many other states which will be there which share a common border those states are known as the contiguous uh, states and if the government is going ahead and providing a permit so that you can operate in those contiguous states also then also that permit ke liye whatever amount is being charged there will be no gst on that amount quickly tell me everyone are we clear with 19a 19b and entry number 61a is everyone clear i have gone ahead and given it in the chart also one amendment over here one small amendment over here and one small amendment over here what i feel in this they have given goods carriages goods carriages ke liye they have gone ahead and given the exemption right in the exam they might go ahead and give you a passenger transportation vehicle is there and a permit has been granted but be very careful the exemption is provided only to a goods carriage i hope everyone is clear quickly give me a heads up are we all clear with this yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead everyone over here entry number 9 a now entry number 9 a sir i hope you guys remember fifa federation football which was going to happen basically i don't remember the full form now fifa which was going to happen in india now everyone to fifa and its subsidiaries fifa and its subsidiaries if anyone is going ahead and providing services or fifa and its subsidiaries are going ahead and providing any services those services were exempted from gst yes sir we remember if someone is providing services to fifa or fifa and its subsidiary is going ahead and providing services those services were exempt from gst earlier also then what is the amendment sir actually what happened fifa was going to happen but then uh, fortunately unfortunately it did not happen unfortunately it did not happen sir services provided by or to fifa and its subsidiaries directly or indirectly relating to any event any of the event under fifa and fifa under 17 women world cup which was to be hosted in india in 2020 but baba what happened over there their covid came and the fifa did not happen however it is rescheduled to happen in india so they have gone ahead and told whenever rescheduled services provided to fifa or services provided by fifa shall be exempt so whenever the fifa women world cup under 17 happens in india whenever it is rescheduled because 2020 did not happen whenever rescheduled the services shall be exempted that's all they have gone ahead and told they have added the word whenever rescheduled means because it did not happen in 2020 whenever it is rescheduled that time also anyone providing services to fifa or services provided by fifa shall be exempt from gst next now there is one new entry entry number 9b which has been inserted entry number 9b now services provided by or to asian football confederation and its subsidiaries afc and its subsidiaries just like fifa there is afc asian football confederation afc and its subsidiaries go if anybody is going ahead and providing the services or they are going ahead and providing any services services provided to afc or services provided by afc has also been exempted from gst that's all has been told over here sir services provided by asian football world cup 2000 asian football afc asian football confederation services provided to afc you can write over here afc for the women world cup 2022 to be hosted in india shall be exempt just put one bracket over here services provided to afc or services provided just like fifa services provided to fifa services provided by fifa was exempted same way if somebody is going ahead and providing services to afc or services are being provided by afc both shall be exempted from gst that's all has been told but one thing you have to remember those services ke liye director sport ministry of youth affair and sport certifies that those services are provided to afc mean those services are being certified by the director sports okay sir that they, those services 
आर डायरेक्टली और इनडायरेक्टली इन रिलेशन टू एनी स्पोर्टिंग इवेंट अंडर ए एफ सी आई होप एवरी वन इज क्लियर एशियन फुटबॉल कॉन्फेडरेशन वेमेन वर्ल्ड कप टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू के लिए इफ एनी बडी इज प्रोवाइडिंग सर्विसेस और दे आर गोइंग एंड एन प्रोवाइडिंग सर्विसेस दो सर्विसेस शैल बी एग्जेप्टेड फ्रॉम जी एस टी दैट्स इट नाउ इन दिस एशियन फुटबॉल वर्ल्ड कप when the asian football confederation is going ahead and doing the world cup when the world cup is happening they will go ahead and sell entry tickets yes sir entry tickets baba the entry tickets ke liye whatever amount is being charged there shall be no gst there sh- first of all whenever services are provided to them or services are provided by them there is no gst now the women world cup will be happening for the world cup whatever entry tickets are being sold on the entry tickets also there will be no gst that's it is the amendment which has come over here this is a new entry which has been inserted these two are the new entry let's go ahead is everyone there with me till here are you all clear with me quickly give me a heads up quickly give me a heads up devna as of now what we are doing let's concentrate on that yes everyone are we all clear with this till here yes sir yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead now <laughs> chalo circular there is one circular which has come this circular i don't find it very important but still it had come so i thought okay fine let's go ahead and understand everyone over here gst on milling of wheat into flour or paddy into rice for distribution by the state government under public distribution system so what the state government does state government ka all this ration shops etc is there now what the state government do in the ration shop they will go ahead and distribute wheat etc now for distribution of the wheat they want wheat so what government went ahead and did government went ahead and told me ramesh can you go ahead and do the milling of grains etc into wheat and give it to me so that i can distribute in the i can go ahead and distribute in the public distribution system the ration shops etc now state government is over here this is state government i am going ahead and providing services to the state government of milling of wheat so that what will happen over here milling services basically i am going ahead and providing the milling services grains i am converting into me, uh, wheat etc and giving it to the government government will distribute in the ration shop now this distribution by the government in the ration shop is an activity which is covered under 243 g or w 243 g or w and anyone going ahead and providing the services to the government in respect of an in respect of this 243 g or w are exempted i hope you guys remember under entry number 3 or entry number 3a and hence government has gone ahead and told these services which are being provided by a person to the government so that government can go ahead and fulfill its obligation under 243g and w these services shall also be exempted from gst let's read this everyone it says whether composite supply of services by way of milling of wheat into wheat flour so what is happening over here milling of wheat is happening you are going ahead you are going ahead and basically producing what wheat flour wheat ko you are doing the milling the milling services are being provided by you to the government okay sir along with fortification fortification means adding minerals vitamins etc adding some minerals vitamins etc to those wheat by any person to the state government for distribution of such wheat flour under public distribution system is eligible for exemption under entry number 3a so what you are going ahead and providing you are providing milling services along with that you are doing fortification also means you are adding some uh, minerals etc so means you are going ahead and providing some goods also along with the service of milling means in the wheat flour you are adding some minerals etc now those minerals wheat ex- mineral uh vitamins etc which you are adding those are goods now government have gone ahead and clarified one simple thing see over here everyone public distributions specifically figures at entry number 28 of the 11th schedule of the constitution which lists the activity that may be that must be entrusted to a panchayat under 243g of the constitution so milling not milling public distribution system is 
लिस्टेड अंडर एंट्री नंबर 28 ऑफ 243 जी मींस इट्स एन एक्टिविटी व्हिच इज डन बाय द गवर्नमेंट अंडर 243 जी एंड आई एम गोइंग एंड एंड हेल्पिंग द गवर्नमेंट टू डू दोस एक्टिविटी व्हिच इज टोल्ड अंडर 243 जी माय सर्विस टू द गवर्नमेंट आल्सो शैल बी एग्जेम्प्टेड बट हियर बिकॉज आई एम एडिंग सम गुड्स आल्सो अलोंग विथ इट दे हैव गॉन एंड एंड टोल्ड इट शैल बी एग्जेम्प्टेड अंडर एंट्री नंबर 3 ए प्रोवाइडेड द वैल्यू ऑफ द गुड्स is up to 25% means whatever minerals etc i am adding it should not cross 25% that's all see over here everyone entry number 3a would apply for composite supply of meat not meat baba wheat sorry and fortification thereof by millers or paddy into rice provided that composite supply that is goods used for fortification packing material does not exceed 25% of the value of कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई ओवर हियर मीन्स सर्विस प्लस द गुड्स का वैल्यू मीन्स दो वाइटामिन एक्सेट्रा और पैकिंग मटीरियल विच यू गॉन एड एंड यूज टू पैक इट शुड नॉट एक्सीड ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट एवरी वन इज इट क्लियर टू ऑल बाबा वर्क कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज इन रिलेशन टू इमोवेबल प्रॉपर्टी देवना इट इज नॉट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू मोबल प्रॉपर्टी कैन आई गो हेड एवरी वन आर वी ऑल क्लियर विद दिस इट्स ए कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई Yes, people, are we clear with this entry? Yes, sir, we are all clear. Remember always, entry number three a applicable provided value of goods supplied does not exceed twenty five percent of the value of supply. I will tell you in the exam they will go ahead and say Ram, a person is going ahead and doing milling of wheat into wheat flour for the government, and the amount is thirty percent. The amount of goods is thirty percent. Baba, please be very careful. that will not be exempted it will be taxable yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead so uh, this admission related services may i have just gone ahead and inserted the chart over here because the chart was amended simple nothing asian football confederation related uh, amendment i have gone ahead and put and fifa and afc also i have gone ahead and added over here yes sir we are clear let's go ahead next now if i am going ahead and providing any services to the government basically government went ahead and told ramesh can you go to can you go ahead and provide training services to these people so basically government appointed me as a gst trainer for some people and i started providing the gst services everyone over here government went ahead and told me ramesh can you go ahead and provide training services to these people i told okay sir i will go ahead and provide the training service government went ahead and told me that i will be paying you i told okay government so government is going to pay me and i am providing any training services that training services for which the total expenditure is being borne by the government those services which are being provided by me on those services i never had to charge any gst that was there earlier now they have gone ahead and told ramesh for an example government went ahead and paid you only 80% and remaining 20% you went ahead and collected from them then also your service shall be exempt so even if government is paying me 100% of the amount or if government is going ahead and paying me 75% of the expenditure also for that training program is being borne by the government then that amount that service provided by me that training program which is being provided by me i will not go ahead and charge any gst so government appointed me government told ramesh go ahead provide training services to these people teach them gst now i went ahead and provided that uh, training services government went ahead and paid me entire amount borne by the government or even if 75% of the amount is being borne by the government then my service shall be exempted from gst so 75% if it is borne by the government see over here services provided to the central government state government administration under any training program for which 75% or more of the total expenditure is borne by the government shall be exempted now my question to you guys what if government had gone ahead and sponsored only 70% 30% i have gone ahead and collected from them always remember that service shall not be exempted from gst on the entire service i have to go ahead and charge gst yes everyone yes sir we are all clear with this let's go ahead next now over here one small uh, 
again one small clarification had come so i have gone ahead and written it down for an example it says representation has been received seeking clarification on applicability of gst on free services free coaching services provided by coaching institution and ngo so there is a coaching institution or it is an ngo and they are going ahead and providing coaching okay under the central scheme of scholarship for students with disability so there are students who are students with disability and government is going ahead and paying me for going ahead and providing them this service wherein i am going ahead and providing coaching services to people with disability and government is going ahead and sponsoring the amount to me quickly tell me everyone will this service provided by me be under gst or it will be exempted i am going ahead and providing training or coaching services to people with disabilities now my question is the central government is going to fund me over here in this service will this service be exempt or not exempted sir this service will be exempted baba if here central government ka scheme it is government is going to pay the entire amount of money and hence my service the coaching services which i am going to provide there will be no gst at all see over here everyone training program i have gone ahead and written it is exempted from gst i have gone ahead and given a reference to the above entry also which we have gone ahead and learned the training program for which 75% or the more the more of the total expenditure is borne by the government shall be exempted from gst yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead next do you guys remember indian railway Indian Railway को all these coaches etc coaches this uh, train का coach engine etc was being supplied by Indian Railway Finance Corporation. Both these entities were different. They used to go ahead and provide all these locomotives, uh, coaches etc to the Indian Railway. And Indian Railway used to go ahead and pay an amount. Now when they were going ahead and giving this. when they were going ahead and providing the services to indian railway that service earlier was exempted now they have gone ahead and deleted this from the exemption and hence all the services which are being provided by irfc to indian railway shall be taxable it is now taxable earlier there was an exemption now the exemption has been deleted see over here everyone irfc leasing of asset basically all those railway ka coaches etc to indian railway is now the exemption is being withdrawn and hence it has become taxable the analysis of amendment i am not going ahead and reading it why sir because i am already going ahead and explaining it to you guys so this thing you guys can read it when you are reading aram se again chalo the next one over here there was an entry which was there everyone there was an entry which was there where renting of vehicle to state transport undertaking and local authorities now renting of vehicle which was there sir if you guys remember services by way of giving on hire to a state transport undertaking if you have a motor vehicle to transport person more than 12 sir to a local authority if you give an electronic operated vehicle sir if you are giving to a gta if you have a truck and you are giving to a gta there will be no gst if you are going ahead and giving motor vehicle for transportation of student faculty and staff to a person who is going ahead and giving services to an educational institution of transportation of student faculty and staff your services was exempted basically if i have a bus and i am giving it to a uh, state transport undertaking i have a electronic operated vehicle and i am giving it to a local authority or i am giving a truck to a gta or i am going ahead and giving a vehicle to a person who is going ahead and providing services of transportation to of student faculty and staff to an educational institution my service was exempted means giving on hire the word used was hire the word used was hire now there is a small clarification which has come and they have gone ahead and told hire includes renting also you know what people went ahead and told the government people went ahead and told the government sir giving on hire word has been used what if we are not using the word hire and we have used the word renting is renting also exempted government told baba simple it is you give on hire or you rent it out both are exempted so i have gone ahead and told over here you give it on hire 
or you rent it out, both are being exempted. Is my point clear to all? Quickly give me a heads up. Are we all clear with this point? Services by way of giving on hire or renting is also exempted. If you are going ahead and giving to a state transport undertaking, local authority or Baba AGTA, all the cases may they have gone ahead and just clarified. Hiring includes renting also. That is being clarified. Are we all clear with this point? Quickly give me a heads up. Can we go ahead? Yes, sir. We are all clear about the exemption ka chart where the amendment happened. I am going ahead and put that also. The IRFC over here. Giving on hire includes renting also. You can write it down over here. Renting. Renting has also been exempted. Yes, sir. We are all clear with this. IRFC wala NT entry has been deleted that I have gone ahead and marked over here. Here, sir, services provided to the government by way of any training program for which earlier total expenditure it was told now even if 75 percent of the expenditure is borne by the government it shall be exempted yes sir we are all clear both the amended chart also i have gone ahead and put it down over here now please come to the next e exemption the next exemption list to tax invoice chapter i hope you guys remember yes sir we remember tax invoice chapter let me go ahead and give you a quick linking first of all everyone over here now we started learning GST with goods or service. Goods or service has to be supplied. No changes still here. Supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Inter or intra GST will be levied. Once GST was levied, sir, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. Sir, there was a small amendment. Section number, rule number 23 may one small amendment was done. Then the next comes over here is, sir, but if I am falling in an exemption, in exemption, there are small, small amendments which I have gone ahead and told. I am very sure one point will be, one or two points out of the amendment will be asked in exemption chapter. Done, sir. Whenever goods and services are being supplied, inter or intra, GST will be levied. One GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. How will he collect, sir? He will have to go ahead and calculate GST. Sir, how will he calculate GST? GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Baba, there is no amendment in value of supply. Once you know the value, the next step comes, sir, we have to go ahead and raise tax invoice, credit note, debit note and also delivery chalan was there. Yes, sir. In this chapter, there is a small amendment which has come. Let's go ahead and see over here. I hope you guys remember that government had gone ahead and told some people have to go ahead. Some people have to go ahead and do e-invoicing. Yes, sir. People have to go ahead and do e-invoicing whose turnover in the preceding financial year had gone ahead and exceeded 50 crore rupees. Yes, sir. We remember that registered person whose aggregate turnover in any preceding financial year from 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20 has exceeded 50 crore rupees as a class of person who has to go ahead and do e-invoicing. Baba, nothing. Generate one invoice and register on the e-invoice one gst.gov.in. Yes, sir. Now, this was not applicable for some people. Means, if you are a SEZ, if you are a person who is referred under 54, sub rule 2, 3, 4, 4A, you don't have to go ahead. You don't have to go ahead and do e-invoicing. Now, in this e-invoicing chapter, they have gone ahead and told one simple thing. Government told, why government department have to do invoicing? So they have gone ahead and told, if there is a government department or there is a local authority, they don't have to do invoicing. Invoicing provisions now made not applicable to a government department or a local authority. That's all is the amendment. Everyone, invoicing the provisions which were there, which were made effective. They have gone ahead and told one simple thing, invoicing provisions are not applicable on a government department and a local authority. So, sir, in total, invoicing provisions are not applicable on whom? If you are a government department or local authority, invoicing not applicable. Or you are an SEZ unit, invoicing provision not applicable. Or I had gone ahead and given one shortcut, BGPM, B for banking companies. Sir, if you are a 
NBFC, sir, financial institution, banking company, or an insurance company, invoicing provisions not applicable. G for GTA, sir, if you are a GTA, supplying services in relation to transportation of goods, invoicing provisions are not applicable. Sir, P for passenger transportation, you are into passenger transportation service, invoicing provisions are not applicable and m4 if you are a multiplex baba on multiplex theaters also it was told e invoicing provisions are not applicable so always remember now sir if you are an scz unit e invoicing provision not applicable if you are a banking company nbfi financial institution insurance company e invoicing provisions are not applicable gta passenger transportation service may if you are there or you are a multiplex e invoicing provisions are not applicable now just they have gone ahead and told if you are a government department or a local authority then also invoicing provisions are not applicable this is the only amendment which has come over here what is the amendment over here e invoicing provisions not applicable to whom now made not applicable to government department or a local authority are we clear with this point quickly give me heads up did you guys get the amendment clearly Yes, everyone, are we all clear with the amendment? Yes, sir, we are all clear with the amendment. Can we go ahead, everyone? Yes, sir, let's go ahead. Baba, Devna, it's not a doubt solving session. I am going to teach only with respect to amendment. For doubt, please go ahead and use the Telegram channel. If you have an amendment related doubt, please talk about it. Other doubts, guys, everyone, kindly go ahead and tell in the telegram channel or you can whatsapp it to me done sir let's go ahead Baba, i see one student the name is your enemy very good hi your enemy chalo let's go ahead everyone over here now now there is a circular which has come there is a circular which has come which talks about which talks about qr code do you guys remember dynamic qr code yes sir dynamic qr code we remember that whenever a Baba, I'll tell you about little about dynamic QR code. I hope you guys remember that they had gone ahead and told that dynamic QR code with respect to B2C supplies had to be given by person whose turnover had exceeded 500 crore. Yes, sir. We remember they had gone ahead and told dynamic QR related provisions were there. Baba, I'm not going to discuss dynamic QR code related provision, but they had gone ahead and told. So, supposingly you are a shopkeeper. One person has come to you. Now, when you are going ahead and issuing him an invoice, in the invoice, one QR code has to be there so that the person can scan, pay and go. Now, this dynamic QR code was give, was told that whenever a person is going ahead and issuing an invoice, which is B2C invoice, dynamic QR code, dynamic QR code has to be shown to him. Means either it has to be shown in a digital display or you have to go ahead and put it in the invoice so that the person can scan pay and go over now it's google pay phone pay which people are going ahead and using government is trying to promote uh online payments and hence government had gone ahead and told if you are a person if you are a person whose turnover in the pre preceding financial year had exceeded 500 crore then you have to go ahead and give dynamic qr code to your customer they will scan and pay and go yes sir point is clear now the relating to this dynamic qr code some clarification have come people had gone ahead and asked and government had gone ahead and clarified although this circular which is there is not covered in your ICI ka amendment material which is there but I feel this circular is little to be known means you should know this circular this circular has come as an amendment although not covered in the statutory update you never know later they can go ahead and say that you have to study this so I have gone ahead and covered it quickly let's go ahead and study okay sir let's do it quickly because ICI has not covered it so okay but still let's do it quickly everyone over here whether dynamic qr code is to be provided on an invoice issued to a person who has a who has obtained a unique identification number i hope you guys remember all these consulates embassies etc are being provided uin number yes sir and if you remember and if you remember whenever a person takes uin number he is not a registered person yes sir so they have gone ahead and clarified one simple thing whenever one person is going ahead and selling to those people who are UIN holder. UIN holders are not registered person and dynamic QR code is to be provided 
with respect to B2C invoices and because he is not a B2B ke liye they had told e invoicing B2C ke liye they had gone ahead and told dynamic QR code and hence they have gone ahead and clarified that whenever you are going ahead and issuing your invoice to a UIN holder Baba please go ahead and give dynamic QR code simple so for an example there is a UIN holder there is a UIN holder he went to one shop to buy something whenever the shopkeeper is issuing the invoice in the invoice dynamic QR code has to be provided so that this UIN holder can scan pay and go simple as that sir crux I have not gone ahead and read this I am telling you simple crux invoice issued to a UIN holder it is a B2C invoice because in UIN holders are not registered person they are holding a UIN holding UIN doesn't make you a registered person yes sir we are clear and hence it is required to comply with the requirement of dynamic QR code next now one person is there one person ko you have gone ahead and provided the dynamic QR code dynamic QR code is linked with the UPI ID with my UPI ID so if I am giving you the dynamic QR code behind the dynamic QR code my UPI ID is there do I separately have to provide you bank account detail also do I have to provide you IFSC code also quickly tell me everyone if I have gone ahead and given you the dynamic QR code which is linked to the UPI ID do I also have to give you my bank account detail my IFSC code so that you can add the bank account and make the payment is it required tell me everyone what do you guys think is it required that I have to separately give you my bank account detail and IFSC code so that you can add and transfer it to me sir UPI is very simple uh, QR code is very simple you show the QR code you scan no adding nothing and hence they have gone ahead and clarified one simple thing that sir UPI is linked to the bank account of the payee or the person collecting the money whether bank account and IFSC detail also needs to be provided separately Baba, it is not required simple separate details of bank account and IFSC may not be provided in the dynamic QR code separately again bank account etc is not required because the dynamic QR code is already linked to my UPI ID and UPI ID was already linked to my bank account money will directly go to my bank account let's go ahead the next one over here in case where the payment is collected by some person other than e-commerce I will tell you you tell me the answer okay everyone for an example there is Flipkart okay I am a supplier I am a supplier you are a buyer you know what happened I went ahead and issued you the invoice I went ahead and issued you the invoice okay now you have to go ahead and make the payment Flipkart ka person came to your doorstep to deliver the goods he will go ahead and show you the he Flipkart ka QR code or he will go ahead and show you supplier ka QR code tell me everyone the QR code which will be showed to you you told sir show me the QR code I want to make the payment now payment will be collected by Flipkart or payment will be collected by the supplier sir payment will be collected by Flipkart and hence their QR code will be used and not mine QR code simple as that the clarification has come Sir, people went ahead and asked, Sir, I am the supplier. I am supplying to Flipkart. When the customer is making the payment, he told, I want to make through QR code. Now, whose QR code has to be given, Sir? Supplier ka QR code or the person who is actually going and collecting the amount? They went ahead and clarified. The person who is actually going ahead and collecting the amount, his QR code has to be given. The money will come to them. They will go ahead and transfer you the money later simple as that over here in that in case where the payment is collected by some person other than the supplier means the e-commerce or any other person authorized by the supplier whether in this case in place of UPI ID of the supplier the UPI ID of such person who is authorized to collect the payment on behalf of the supplier may be provided simple they clarified in case person collecting the payment is different from the supplier the UPI ID of the person authorized to collect the payment may be provided in the dynamic QR code instead of the UPI ID of the supplier. Now you tell me one thing my UPI ID or Flipkart's UPI ID everyone quickly tell me everyone my UPI ID or Flipkart's UPI ID my UPI ID or Flipkart's UPI ID MJ it will remain on YouTube don't worry about it. 
Yes, everyone, my UPI ID or Flipkart's UPI ID will be provided in the dynamic QR code. Sir, Flipkart's UPI ID will be provided in the dynamic QR code. The money will go to Flipkart and then they will go ahead and later remit it to you. Yes, sir, we are all clear. Chalo, let's go ahead. The next one over here. Now, the next one over here talks about, uh, <coughs> for an example, for an example, I went ahead, I went ahead and provided some services outside India. Everyone over here, I went ahead and provided, I am in India, I provided some service in the US, but service or goods, whatever, I have gone ahead and provided in the US, outside India, but the place of supply is in India. And hence on that amount, GST is being charged. Now the question which was raised was, when you are going ahead and providing an invoice to a person outside India, when you are providing the invoice to a person outside India, will you go ahead? See, I'll tell you one simple thing. If you are going ahead and providing a service outside India, which is an export of service, for export of service, it was told that you have to go ahead and do invoicing. Yes, sir, we remember if it's an export for B2B supplies and for export, we had to go ahead and do e-invoicing. Yes, sir. We remember that. That is very simple. And when e-invoicing provisions are applicable, dynamic QR code was not applicable. Okay. Now, I went ahead and provided some services to a person who is outside India. However, however, when I provided these services, for these services, the place of supply is in India. And when the place of supply is in India, supply is in India, recipient is outside India, but the place of supply is in India. When the place of supply is in India, it is not an export of service. When it is not an export of service, when it is not an export of service and it is a B2C supply, my question to you guys is, when you are going ahead and issuing an invoice, sir, do I have to go ahead and give the dynamic QR code? Is the question. Tell me one thing. One person sitting outside India, do you think he will use U UPI? Do you think he will go ahead and use Google pay, phone pay and make the payment. Government have gone ahead and told in this scenario, in this scenario where the place of supply is in India and you have gone ahead and provided the service uh, to a person who is outside India. Now in this scenario, when you are going ahead and issuing the invoice, in the invoice, dynamic QR code is not required. Why? Because anyways, the person who is outside India will not go ahead and use the dynamic QR code. Government have gone ahead and told over here, see, in case where the receiver of service is located outside India, the payment is received by the supplier in foreign exchange through RBI approved modes, mo modes. But as per the provision of IGST Act, the place of supply of such service is in India. The place of supply is in India. It is not an export, sir. If it is not an export, it is not an export. Then in that scenario, what will happen? It is not because if it was B2B invoice, invoicing provision, export, invoicing provision. Sir, it is a B2C supply, but the person is outside India. He is going to make payment through RBI approved modes only. But so they have gone ahead and told then such supply is not considered as export of service. Whether in such case, the dynamic QR code is required in the invoice for such supply to such recipient located outside India. Tell me one thing. I have provided one service to a person who is in US. Place of supply is in India. Now, do you think the US guy will go ahead and scan the QR code and make the payment? But in that scenario, government have gone ahead and so told simple. In such cases, in case of service provided outside India, such dynamic QR code cannot be used by the recipient who is located outside India. Such service may be issued without having any dynamic QR code. You are not required to provide any dynamic QR code. Done, sir. Next. Everyone over here, the next clarification which is there, for an example, you went to one shop, you went to one shop, you go ahead and tell him, sir, I want to buy this. You went to one shop and you told him, sir, I want to buy this. What will he do? He will go ahead and issue you an invoice. He will go ahead and issue you an invoice. In the invoice, he will go ahead and provide the dynamic QR code and you go ahead and make the payment. Sir, that is very simple. First, they give the invoice with the dynamic QR code and then we go ahead and make the payment. But you know what? There are shops also which go ahead and tell you, sir, 
first you go ahead and make the payment because I don't trust you. After I raise the invoice, what if you run away? So sir, first you go ahead and make the payment. So what they will go ahead and do? They will go ahead and show you. They will go ahead and show you. They will generate one order ID. Order ID number one. And under the order ID number one, they will generate one dynamic QR code. And they will tell you, sir, please scan, pay and later we will generate the invoice. Now, people went ahead and asked the government, sir, in this scenario, what to do? In the second scenario, when we first collect the payment, when we first collect the payment, later we go ahead and issue the invoice, what to do? Government told, very simple, no problem at all. When first you collect the payment, when you are collecting the payment, there is a transaction ID or an order ID which is generated. Just do one thing. When you issue the invoice to the buyer, no. When you are going ahead and issuing now the invoice, in the invoice, write this order ID. That's it. Simple as that. Is my point clear to all? Quickly tell me everyone. You went to one shop. The shopkeeper first showed you the QR code. You scanned. You paid. Later, he generated the invoice. So, later when he is generating the invoice, in the invoice, this transaction ka detail or this order ID just has to be written. That's all has been clarified by the government. Government told, please go ahead and put the order ID in the invoice. Is my point clear to all? Are we clear with this point? Yes, sir. We are 100% clear. In some instance of retail sales over the counter, the payment from the customer is received on the payment counter by displaying dynamic QR code on the digital display whereas the invoice along with the invoice number is generated on the processing system being used by the supplier or the merchant after receiving the payment in such case it may not be possible for the merchant to provide the details of the invoice in the dynamic qr code displayed to the customer however each transaction or receipt of payment from the customer is having a unique order id or sales reference number which is linked to the invoice whether in such case, the order ID or reference number of such transaction can be provided in the dynamic QR code display digitally instead of invoice number. They are going ahead and telling first you go ahead and collect the payment. When you are collecting the payment in the dynamic QR code, basically first you generate the order ID and then you go ahead and show him the dynamic QR code. He scans, makes the payment. When you make the invoice, in the invoice just put the order ID or the transaction ID which is there. Government told when the invoice is not available at the time of digital display of dynamic QR code in over the sales count over counters over the counter sale the unique order ID or unique sales reference number which is uniquely linked to the invoice issued for the said transaction may be provided in the dynamic QR code. Let's go ahead with the next one. Now I'll tell you the sixth one. For an example, you went on Flipkart. Okay, not, not on Flipkart. For an example, I am a supplier. I sold 10,000 rupees ka goods. Customer went ahead and used a coupon. Customer had a coupon. Customer used 2,000 rupees. Now, tell me one thing. When I am going ahead and giving him the dynamic QR code, dynamic QR code may amount I should put as 8,000 or I should go ahead and collect 10,000. One customer came to my shop. I went ahead and gave him the dynamic QR code. Now, he went ahead and gave me a 2000 rupees ka coupon. I should give him a dynamic QR code for 8000 rupees or 10,000 rupees. Are dynamic QR code is for collecting the payment. You have to collect 8000 rupees. So please give the dynamic QR code also for 8000 rupees. That is being clarified. See over here everyone. When prepayment has already been received by the merchant, either in advance or by adjustment, example using a voucher, discount coupon, before the dynamic QR code is generated, what amount should be provided in the dynamic QR code for the invoice value? Simple. In case part payment for any supply has already been received, the dynamic QR code may be provided only for the remaining amount payable by the customer or recipient against the invoice value. Now, tell me one thing. For an example, if I tell you one customer came to your shop, and he uh, purchased an item for 10,000 rupees. 5,000 he gave in cash. Now, remaining 5,000 is there. You will give him a dynamic QR code for 10,000 or 5,000? Simple, tell me everyone. You will give him a dynamic QR code for 10,000 rupees or 5,000 rupees. Are sir, I have to show him a dynamic QR code for 5,000 because I am going to collect only 5,000 rupees. That is what is being simply clarified over here. If already some amount is received, you have to go ahead and give a dynamic QR code 
only for the balance that is being told over here i hope everyone is clear yes sir we are all clear over here the most important amendment of your tax invoice chapter what is the amendment everyone e invoicing provision now made not applicable to a government department or a local authority simple as that sir e invoicing provisions are now not applicable to a government department or a local authority yes sir point is clear let's go ahead everyone move ahead we started learning gst with goods or services goods or services has to be supplied supply can be either interstate or intrastate intra or inter gst will be levied once gst was levied it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person i told you over here rule number 23 may amendment yes sir once it has to be collected and paid sir gst we have to go ahead and calculate value of supply gst is equal sorry gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax no amendment over here the next chapter was tax invoice credit note debit note here one circular and one i have gone ahead and told you one small circular is there and sir e invoice may not e invoicing ha huh, sorry e invoicing may they have gone ahead and told government department or local authority need not go ahead and do e invoicing now everyone over here once goods and services are being supplied inter and intra gst will be levied it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person the next was gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax now what will you do you will go ahead and give a tax invoice sir tax invoice debit note credit note and now sir in the next step i will go ahead and maintain my accounts and records and i will go ahead and send the goods to the other person with the help of a e way bill baba both the chapter mein accounts and records and e way bill mein one small amendment is there accounts and records mein sir what is the amendment nothing baba i hope you guys remember section number 355 section number 355 used to say that whenever a person ka turnover aggregate turnover registered person whose aggregate turnover exceeds 2 crore rupees he has to go ahead and get audit done by a chartered accountant or a cost accountant yes sir we remember that now section number 355 has been deleted it means a person is no longer required to get audit done from a chartered accountant or a cost accountant see over here everyone section number 355 they have gone ahead and deleted the whole section it means gst audit by chartered accountant or cost accountant has been done away with baba no more audit by a chartered accountant or cost accountant this section has been deleted is my point clear to all quickly give me heads up are we all clear with the amendment sir section number 355 is deleted audit no more required to be done by a chartered accountant or cost accountant this section has been deleted yes sir are we all clear with the point yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead now the next amendment everyone over here once goods and services is being supplied inter intra gst will be levied it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person how will he collect he will calculate and then he will raise a tax invoice then he will maintain his accounts and records and he will send the goods to the other person with the help of a e way bill now in e way bill they have gone ahead and made a small amendment let's go ahead and see the next chapter so accounts and records ka chart i have gone ahead and put over here in the chart there is a small amendment this audit by charter accountant or cost accountant this has been deleted done sir the next one everyone over here now the next one talks about e way bill e way bill me do you guys remember e way bill me there was a restriction which was there sir rule number 138 e went ahead and told that your e way bill shall be blocked do you guys remember blocking of e way bill if you don't go ahead and furnish your return i hope you guys remember cmp08 not furnished by a composition dealer for two consecutive quarters sir normal person gstr1 has not been furnished or gstr3b has not been furnished do you guys remember yes sir we remember in this scenario your e way bill portal gets blocked yes sir we remember it means do you guys remember one thing also sir if your e way bill portal is blocked it means you cannot go ahead and do outward supply also means 
for your outward supply where you are going ahead and mentioning yourself as supplier in that scenario also you can't go ahead and generate eBay bill if you are buying from someone for your inward supplies also and for your outward supplies both ka case mein eBay bill was blocked means if you are a person who is in default if i am a person who is in default means i have not gone ahead and filed my returns then eBay bill portal was blocked for me what is the amendment sir baba earlier for your buying and your selling means as a recipient somebody also can't send you goods somebody can't put your name and generate the eBay bill as a seller also you can't go ahead and generate eBay bill just imagine you want to sell goods to me and you are not able to generate eBay bill don't you think for my default government is going ahead and penalizing you okay my sales government told your eBay bill portal blocked it means for my sale i will not be able to generate eBay bill you are a seller to me you want to generate eBay bill by putting my gstn number still you are not able to generate don't you think for my default government is penalizing you and hence government went ahead and told a supplier will not be able to generate eBay bill for his outward supplies but for his inward supplies when somebody is going ahead and generating eBay bill there shall be no blocking it means when somebody is selling the goods to me they will be able to put my gstn number and generate the eBay bill earlier government had told ramesh for your sales also for your purchase also eBay bill shall be blocked but now they have gone ahead and made a small change see over here everyone no person shall be allowed to furnish details in part a in respect of a registered person whether is a supplier or recipient these words are being now deleted and they have gone ahead and told in respect of outward supplies of goods of a registered person so if i am a person is in default with respect to my sales the eBay bill portal will be blocked but whenever i am purchasing as a recipient my name can be inserted in the eBay bill and i can go ahead and purchase means when somebody is selling to me they can very well or uh, generate the eBay bill is my point clear to all everyone so the amendment lies over here this blocking has been deleted and they have gone ahead and told when somebody is selling to you in that scenario eBay bill can be generated blocking will happen only with respect to your outward supplies is my point clear to all Yes everyone are we 100% clear can we go ahead Quick quick quickly tell me everyone Yes sir we are all clear till here let's go ahead Next Everyone over here eBay bill Rule number 138 eBay amendment was there so I have gone ahead and given the chart also over here so in the chart you will be able to see earlier for your inward supply also outward supply also both ke respect me you can't generate eBay bill now you can't generate eBay bill as a supplier but as a recipient you will be able to generate the eBay bill yes sir point is clear next everyone over here <coughs> one goods and services are being supplied inter or intra gst will be levied one gst was levied it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person sir he will calculate gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value you will go ahead and prepare the tax invoice credit note debit note now you will maintain your accounts and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of a eway bill now in between this one chapter of exemption had come so i told you amendments in exemption chapter taxable person rule number 23 tax invoice chapter e invoicing ka provision accounts and records i told you sir audit by charter accountant or cost accountant deleted now sir eway bill mein earlier blocking was there with respect to your outward supply also with respect to your inward supply also now inward supply related blocking has been removed yes sir point is clear so when goods and services are being supplied gst was levied collected and paid gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax you will go ahead and raise the tax invoice you will maintain your accounts and send the goods to the other person now once you go ahead and send the goods to the other person government will tell ramesh what are you waiting for please pay my gst so your time comes bad your time of supply comes yes sir 
there is no amendment over here once your time of supply comes means your liability to pay will come what will you do once your liability to pay comes sir once my liability to pay comes i'll have to go ahead and pay gst to the government now i will go ahead and use my input tax credit yes sir in input tax credit there is no amendment now in input tax credit chapter along with that after that i taught you job work and i taught you isd in the chapter of job work there is a small amendment which had come do you guys remember a job worker had to go ahead no in case of job work the principal who is sending the goods for the job work they had to go ahead and file quarterly itc04 yes sir we remember quarterly itc04 had to be filed now this quarterly has been made people went and told the government sir we have to go ahead and do so much work please remove all the gst itc04 government went ahead and told she will we can't remove it totally but compliance burden we can make it little less and government went ahead and told the gst itc04 instead of going ahead and filing it quarterly now they have gone ahead and told if you are a person see over here everyone whose turnover is up to 5 crore then you can just go ahead and file it annually one gst itc 04 which was quarterly now made annually annually once the year gets over you can file it by 25th of april so for this whole year earlier four gst itc 04 were there every quarter ka one gst itc 04 now sir instead of four one gst itc 04 has to be filed which is on 25th of april sir if my turnover is greater than 5 crore then they went ahead and told one year may you can go ahead and file it twice so for six months you can go ahead and file it by 25th october and sir for the remaining six months you can go ahead and file it by 25th of april quickly tell me everyone is this amendment clear to all yes sir we are all clear people i want a heads up from everyone are we all there is it clear till here so, reduction in compliance burden by the government GST ITC 04 now to be filed half yearly or annually based on the turnover, aggregate turnover in the preceding financial year. You have to see the preceding financial year. Aggregate turnover in the preceding financial year up to 5 crore annually once. Sir, in the preceding financial year greater than turnover, uh, greater than 5 crore ka turnover, then half yearly you have to go ahead and file by 25th October and 25th of April twice you have to file gst itc04 itc04 quarterly now made half yearly and annually simple yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead so i have gone ahead and put this uh, chart also why sir because this itc04 related amendment was there so i have gone ahead and put the amendment over here yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead next sir once my liability comes for an example i am liable to pay 1000 rupees i will go ahead and use my input tax credit I use my input tax credit. Remaining amount, I will go ahead and make the payment. People, I want to go ahead and ask you one simple thing. Quickly tell me everyone. When you have to go ahead and make the payment, when you go ahead, when you have to go ahead and make the payment, do you guys remember that in the earlier attempt, I had gone ahead and taught you, means in your class, I had already taught you that sir, if you are going ahead and filing your return for a month, for an example, April month ka return, 20th May, I am going to file. Now, April month ka return, I had to go ahead and file by 20th May. 10 lakh rupees was the amount, uh, output tax liability. Input tax credit, I had 5 lakh rupees. Interest, I have to go ahead and pay on what amount, everyone? Can you tell me? Sorry. Uh, remaining 5 lakh, I had to go ahead and pay. But I did not file my return over here. I filed my return on 30th May. When I am filing my return on 30th May, for late payment i had to pay interest do you guys remember for late payment i had to pay interest my question to you guys interest is to be paid on 10 lakh which is cross liability or interest is to be paid on your net liability my question is interest is to be paid on your because you have gone ahead and filed your return late hence you are going ahead and paying your tax late interest has to be paid on gross tax liability or net tax liability quickly tell me everyone quickly tell me interest is to be paid on gross tax liability or net tax liability if you guys remember 
sir we remember that the net tax liability pay we have to go ahead and pay interest yes sir it is very simple net tax liability pay you have to go ahead and pay interest baba the same thing remains now also now also you are required to pay on the net tax liability only then sir what is the amendment baba total bakwas irrelevant kind of an amendment but still i will go ahead and read everyone over here in the by finance act 2019 government had inserted this proviso where government had gone ahead and told when you are going ahead and declaring the sales of a month and you have input tax credit you have to go ahead and deduct the input tax credit and if you have made a late payment for late payment interest is to be paid on net tax liability this amend this was done by finance act 2019 but finance act 2019 mein when they inserted this amendment no they never went ahead and told it the amendment will be applicable from 1st july 2017 just by a press release they went ahead and told now everyone over here now they have gone ahead and inserted finance act 2021 may same to same amendment they have gone ahead and inserted instead of word levied correction has been made and they have used the word payable this is not as amendment at all the amendment is now they have gone ahead and told see over here in section number 50 earlier they told that this proviso shall be inserted it means they told sir you have to pay gst on your net tax liability this proviso was inserted by finance act 2019 that sir what is the amendment now they have gone ahead and told see see same same in section number 50 same proviso shall this proviso shall be substituted means this proviso gone and now this proviso substitute same to same proviso they wrote again but they told one very important line shall be deemed to have been substituted with effect from first day of july 2017 it means you are required to pay you are required to pay interest on your net tax liability they have now told that it is with effect from first july 2017 it means even if before the coming of this amendment if you had gone ahead and paid your taxes on your taxes on your net tax liability you are required to pay interest if you had paid on your net tax liability officers will not go ahead and do any recovery from you because from 1st july only they are telling that you are required to 1st july 2017 say retrospectively you are required from that time till date means now on any interest to be paid always has to be paid on your net tax liability yes sir so sir what is the effect of amendment nothing baba there was a levied word which was there which was wrong and hence uh, it's just a correction which we have, they have done they have now inserted the word payable otherwise there is no amendment over here earlier also for your exam purpose sir what is the amendment no amendment you are required to pay gst uh, interest on the net tax liability earlier also now also you are required to calculate interest on the net tax liability are we all clear quickly give me a heads up yes sir we are all clear here amendment levied word substituted with payable but amendment there is no amendment at all yes sir point is clear can we go ahead everyone quickly give me a heads up are we all clear till here quick 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 quickly tell me everyone are we all clear till here yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead everyone over here now we started learning gst with goods or service goods or service has to be supplied supply can be interstate supply can be interstate interstate or intrastate gst will be levied once gst was levied it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person people i'll tell you once again collected and paid by a taxable person gst has to be paid no rule number 23 there is an amendment okay once gst has to be collected and paid sir how will he collect he will calculate gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax people five more minutes we'll take a quick five minutes break but five more minutes stay over here five more minutes once we are done with returns chapter we'll take a quick break done sir once you know the value you will prepare tax invoice credit note debit note in this chapter the e invoicing may amendment is there and one circular is there with respect to dynamic qr code done sir once you raise the tax invoice the next step was to maintain your accounts accounts and records and send the goods to the other person with a e way bill sir accounts and records you told 35 5 has been deleted 
इट मीन्स ए पर्सन इज नो मोर रिक्वायर्ड टू गेट ऑडिट डन बाई चार्ट अकाउंटेंट और कॉस्ट अकाउंटेंट ई वे बिल रूल नंबर वन थर्टी एट ई अमेंडेड इनवर्ड सप्लाईज के लिए नो मोर ब्लॉकिंग ब्लॉकिंग डन वंस आई मेंटेन माई अकाउंट एंड रिकॉर्ड सर लाइबिलिटी विल कम एट द टाइम ऑफ सप्लाई I will go ahead and use my input tax credit. No amendment, sir. Then here job work chapter came. Job work me I told you, sir. ITC zero four related amendment is there. Once you go ahead and job work done, sir. Then ISD no amendment at all. Now once you go ahead and use your input tax credit, credit remaining amount you have to make the payment. Payment chapter no amendment. I have told you amendment but no amendment. Nothing. You have to still pay GST. interest on net tax liability only done sir point is clear next once you make the payment what is the next step can you tell me everyone once you go ahead and make the payment what is the next step sir once i go ahead and make the payment government says ramesh everything is done please go ahead and file your return now returns chapter me everyone listen to me carefully returns chapter me they have gone ahead and made a small change in section number 44 section number 44 which used to talk about annual return and plus annual return has to be read with uh, rule number 80 so annual return section number 40 read with rule number 80 basically they have gone ahead and made changes in section number 44 section number 44 read with rule number 80 section number 44 as well as rule number 80 they have substituted and they have put one new section only they have put the uh, means they have deleted the old section and they have put the new uh, uh, law in the section itself but i have gone ahead and traced only the changes which have happened now see over here everyone these are the changes which are there small small changes which have gone ahead and happened over here in rule number see third one is totally deleted section number 44 section number 44 read with rule number 80 has been amended now theek hai but i want to go ahead and tell you one simple thing i'll tell you do you guys remember do you guys remember audit ka provision has been deleted now yes sir we remember no more audit by chartered accountant and cost accountant it means when you are furnishing your annual return along with that reconciliation statement was to be submitted reconciliation statement if your turnover was exceeding 2 crore once your once your crore, uh, aggregate turnover exceeds 2 crore you have to get the audit done by a chartered accountant cost accountant and submit your uh, gstr 9c yes sir we remember but time to time government was making the changes and government had gone ahead and told I will tell you for seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, nineteen, nineteen, twenty. If your aggregate turnover was up to two crore, government had gone ahead and told that annual return will be optional. I hope you guys remember. And there was no audit ka requirement up to two crore. Anyways, means for seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, nineteen, nineteen, twenty, annual return was made optional. Actually, annual return is required by every registered person, but annual return was made optional, and GST audit was not required. If your turnover is greater than two crore up to five crore, annual return to required yes, but GST audit government had gone ahead and exempted and told up to five crore GST audit not required. I hope you guys remember for these years government had gone ahead and told GST audit also not required up to five crore. Government told small amount five crore no audit not required. But then if your turnover was greater than five crore, the annual return also required. GST audit is also required, and you are required to furnish reconciliation statement in GST R 9C. Quickly, give me heads up. Do you guys recall till here? Does everyone recall till here? Quickly, give me heads up. Is everyone in agreement with me till here? Yes, sir. We recall till here that annual return up to two crore was made optional. Audit was not required. Greater than two crore annual return was required, but audit was not required. And greater than five crore. both were required annual return also required and gst audit also required yes everyone yes sir we are all clear till here we remember till here now now because the audit is gone instead of instead of calling it gst the audited uh, 
financial statement along with the reconciliation statement in GSTR 9C. Now you are going to submit GSTR 9C, but that will be self certified. That's it. They have gone ahead and made one simple change. For the financial year 2021, also you have to remember that for the financial year 2021, 2021, also you have to remember that, sir, up to 2 crore annual return is not required. They have exempted from annual return. Okay, sir, do I have to furnish reconciliation statement GSTR 9C self certified? Baba, audit is not required. Self certified also is not required. Audit to deleted, anyways. You are no more required to give self certified. You are not required only. Okay, if my turnover is greater than 2 crore up to 5 crore, remember annual return is also required. Plus, self certified copy is not required. Same as earlier. But if your turnover is greater than 5 crore, Sir, annual return also required and self-certified reconciliation statement in GSTR 9C is also required. Is my point clear to all? Yes, sir, we are clear. Simple as that. Sir, for financial year 2021, annual return not required if your turnover is up to 2 crore. Aggregate turnover greater than 2 crore. Annual return is mandatory. Aggregate turnover greater than 5 crore. Annual return plus reconciliation statement which is self-certified no more chartered accountant or cost accountant uh, certified it is self-certified reconciliation statement that will be required is my point clear to all yes sir we are clear this is the crux of the amendment in section number 44 and rule number 80 are we all clear yes sir we are all clear you guys can read this at home this is the crux I believe you can remember this. Don't forget it. Done, sir. Point is clear. Let's go ahead. Now, maximization of late fee. Now, people, do you guys recall that there was a late fee which was levied? Late fee which was there? Everyone, do you guys remember? Listen. I had to go ahead and file return for the month of April by 20th of May. I filed my return. And when you file your return and you pay your taxes on 20th May. But you know what happened? You delayed it and you filed on 30th May. Sir, always remember for late filing of return, there is late fee. And because when you filed your return late, late payment ke liye, you have to pay interest. I am talking about late fee. Late fee was levied under section number 47. Do you guys recall that? Yes, sir. We all recall that whenever you are filing your return late, you have to pay late fee. And for late payment of tax, you have to pay interest. Done, sir. This point is clear. For late return, late fee. For late payment of tax, interest. Now, what I am telling over here, this late fee which is there, how much was the late fee? You know what was the late fee? Late fee for all the returns, it was the same. If you are filing your return late, rupees 100 under CGST, rupees 100 under SGST, maximum it will be 5000 under CGST Act. The maximum 100, 100, 100, 100, they can make it, make it maximum 5000 under CGST and under SGST also 5000 under SGST. But then later they went ahead and Waive the late fee for GSTR 1, uh, 3B. I'll write over here so that you guys can also make a change. In your returns ka chart everyone. Returns ka chart. In your returns ka chart I am making this change. Not change. I am just telling you. Waiver of the late fee was given. Wherein GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, GSTR 4, 5 and 6 ke liye. For only this late returns, they had gone ahead and reduced the late fee and they had told if you are filing GSTR 1, GSTR 3B nil, then it will be 10 rupees per day. Means this, instead of this, they have gone ahead and told if it is a nil return, we will go ahead and charge rupees 10. Subject to a maximum of 5000 under CGST, subject to a maximum of 5000 under SGST. But other than nil, other than nil means if your return is not a nil return, what is a nil return? Where there is nothing which is written, means you have not put any amounts in your return, that is a nil return. But if you have put any amount in any column, that is not a nil return. In that scenario, they have gone ahead and told 25 rupees 
सीजीएसटी ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज एस जी एस टी पर डे मैक्सिमम फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज सी जी एस टी फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज एस जी एस टी क्विकली टेल मी एवरी वन दिस इज वॉट आई टोल्ड यू वॉट वॉज देयर अर्लियर क्विकली टेल मी आर यू गाइज रिमेम्बरिंग टिल हियर डू यू गाइज रिमेम्बर टिल हियर टेन रुपीज फॉर नील रिटर्न अदर रिटर्न ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज मैक्सिमम फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज वॉज देयर बिकॉज आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सी जी एस टी एक्ट आई एम टेलिंग यू अबाउट दैट ओनली येस एवरी वन क्विकली टेल मी Quick, 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 quick! Everyone, quickly tell me: Are we all clear till here? Yes. Do you guys recall till here? Yes, sir. We all recall till here. Now, what they have gone ahead and done? See, this five thousand rupees maximum which was there. No, government went ahead and reduced this amount. Okay, government went ahead and reduced this amount. But people had a problem. People went ahead and told, sir. you reduce this amount why not maximum so government went ahead and told this maximum fees which is there also will go ahead and reduce and late fee rationalized and they went ahead and reduced this 5000 rupees also to a lower amount means the maximum amount which they are going to collect they went ahead and reduced that also okay sir so they went ahead and reduced yes they went ahead and reduced for gstr1 gstr 3b they went ahead and reduced for gstr4 also and for gstr7 also <sighs> yes everyone are we clear till here baba nil return money nil return it will be 10 rupees 25 rupees other than nil return simple as that money let's go ahead everyone over here now now what i have gone ahead and done i have gone ahead and made a small chart so that you guys can remember all the maximum amounts which they have gone ahead and made see over here everyone if you are a person i will go ahead and upload this chart sir where will you upload this chart i will tell you you can go to ca ramesh soni okay you can go to rameshsoni.com rameshsoni.com free resources in free resources i will go ahead and upload this chart but please listen first theek hai done sir this i have just now made it yesterday night so that i can make it simple for you guys sir normal registered person normal registered person means other than composition i am talking about if you are a person who is filing gstr1 or gstr3 b who is filing a nil return sir nil return ke liye cgst mein it is 10 rupees per day yes but now maximum which was 5000 they have reduced it and told if you are a person who is filing nil return for you the maximum is going to be 250 rupees this is the current scenario how much is the maximum amount of late fee that will be levied on you done sir sir if i am filing other than nil nil means where your entire all the column is nil but if you are filing a return with the which is not a nil return other than nil return and your aggregate turnover is up to 1.5 crore in the preceding financial year gstr1 gstr3 b sir it is other than nil return to 25 rupees per day to okay the maximum amount people i am talking about cgst similar amount sgst may also igst then double i am telling you only about cgst amounts listen the maximum will be 1000 rupees okay done sir sir if my turnover is greater than 1.5 crore up to 5 crore greater than 1.5 up to 5 crore in the preceding financial year if you are filing gstr1 or gstr3 b both ke liye gstr1 also and gstr3 b also 25 rupees per day late fee if you delay by the due date and maximum will be 2500 rupees under cgst 2500 sgst igst then 5000 sir normal registered person other than nil return who is filing means who has some items in his return for them aggregate turnover greater than 5 crore then baba gstr1 or gstr3 b 25 rupees per day and maximum will be 5000 rupees i want everyone to quickly tell me did you guys understand this till here late fee has been reduced over here did you guys understand till here quickly tell me everyone can i go ahead are is everyone clear with the late fee reduction of gstr1 and gstr3 b is everyone clear yes sir we are all clear now i'll go ahead and talk about the second one the second one is talking about composition dealer everyone see over here composition dealer files gstr4 if it is a nil return 10 rupees if it is other than nil it is 25 rupees per day sir 
the maximum over here will be two, 250 rupees under CGST Act, 250 under SGST, IGST, then 500. Sir, so the maximum which they will go ahead and charge will be 1000 rupees. Means it was 5000 reduced now. Government have gone ahead and reduced it. He gets done, sir. Sir, GSTR 5. I am telling you about all the returns. See, although they have gone ahead and spoken only about amendment has come in GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, GSTR 4. So, amendment ka area which is there? This one, this one and TDS deductor. Only three place may amendment. But I have given you a whole summary so that anywhere they ask you, you will be able to answer in the exam. Next. NRTP, nil return or any other return, 10 rupees per day, 25 rupees per day. Nil ke case mein 10 rupees, 25. Maximum is still 5000, there is no reduction. NRTP ka case mein there is no reduction. There was no reduction which was given for NRTP GSTR 5 ka late filing. Done. Sir, if you are an input service distributor, whether you are filing nil return or any other return, always remember GSTR 6 is going. Okay? And late fee is 25 rupees. There was no 10 rupees ka concept for ISD and maximum is 5000. There is no amendment in this. This is same as earlier. Done. GSTR 7. Baba, I believe that they should ask you this. TDS deductor ka case may they have reduced. GSTR 7 if you are filing late per day 25 rupees and maximum instead of 5000 they have made it 1000. Earlier it was 100 rupees. Baba in your TDS deductor ka chart also you can make this change. If you have my chart book in your TDS deductor ka chart also you can make these changes. It is not 100 rupees. Now it is how much? 25 rupees per day up to a maximum of not 5000, 1000 rupees. Next. TCS collector, it remains the same. GSTR 8 KL rupees 100 per day. Maximum is 5000 rupees. Sir, annual return, what is the late fee? GSTR 9 KL 8 is rupees 100 per day. Maximum is 0.25% of the turnover in state or UT. This late fee, which I have gone ahead and told you per day with respect to CGST and maximum amount with respect to CGST. SGST may also similar amount is payable. And total amount means the IGST. So be careful in your exam. Are they asking you CGST or are they asking you IGST ka late fee? If it is IGST ka late fee, you have to double it. Is the late fee ka concept clear? GSTR 1, 3B, GSTR 1, 3B, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. All returns I have gone ahead and told you. Quickly tell me. But the amendments are only GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, GSTR 4 and GST and GSTR 7. Am I clear with the late fee concept? Quickly tell me everyone, are we all clear with the late fee concept? The same thing has been told over here that late fee has been reduced for GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, GSTR 4 and GSTR 7. So, I have told you over here, only this three place may amendment is there. This chart I will upload in rameshsone.com, free resource, you can download it. Can we go ahead everyone quickly tell me are we clear so the returns ka chapter may one annual return amendment second late fee ka amendment is everyone clear till here can we go ahead and take a quick break can we take a quick break everyone yes sir can we take a break yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead and take a break I will do one thing in the break. I will leave this here only. If anyone wants to copy, they can copy. Let's take a quick break. Once we come back from the break, once we come back from the break, uh, remaining amendments which are there, we'll go ahead and study them. Let's take a quick break, everyone. Let's take a quick break. People, the class will be continuing till the time we go ahead and finish all the amendments, mostly one and a half hour more. So let's go ahead, take a quick break, come back from the break and we'll study the remaining amendment. Go quickly, come back quickly. 10 minutes break, everyone. It's a break, 10 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes ka break. I will give 15 minutes. You want to eat something, eat something quickly. 8.25 it is, 8.40 we resume. Go quickly, come back quickly everyone.
ब्रेक इज ओवर वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर द ब्रेक कैन वी ऑल स्टार्ट द क्लास कैन वी ऑल स्टार्ट द क्लास इज एवरी वन बैक कैन वी स्टार्ट द क्लास कैन वी रिज्यूम कैन वी रिज्यूम एवरी वन क्विकली गिव मी एट्स अप सो दैट आई नो एवरी वन इज बैक एंड वी कैन गो एड एंड रिज्यूम द क्लास Yes, sir. We are all back. Let's resume. Chalo. Now, everyone, over here now. Before everyone comes in, let's go ahead and revise till where we are. We started learning GST with what? Goods or services. Goods or service has to be supplied. Supply can be interstate or intrastate, inter or intra. GST will be levied. Once GST was levied, some people. Also asks for composition levy. Once GST was levied, GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. How will he collect? He will calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. Once you know the value, you will prepare tax invoice, credit note, and debit note. Then you will print a, you will prepare your accounts, and you will send the goods to the other person with the help of a e way bill. now your liability comes liability comes at the time of supply you will use your input tax credit other chapters like job work and isd is also over here then you will go ahead and make the payment yes sir once you make the payment tds and tcs is also over here and then you will go ahead and file your return what did we learn till now we went ahead and learned uh, okay before you collect and pay there was a chapter of exemption also I have gone ahead and taught you the amendments relating to a chapter of exemption. I have taught you taxable person may rule number twenty three may amendment. I have told you then tax invoice chapter tax invoice may e invoicing related uh, amendment. I have told you and there is a circular which I have gone ahead and told you over here. Accounts and record section number thirty five five has been deleted. Audit by chartered accountant or cost accountant. E way bill rule number one thirty eight E. There is a small amendment which I have told. Time of supply no amendment. ITC chapter no amendment. Job work job work may I told ITC zero four which is there for that earlier it was quarterly now made half yearly or annually based on your turnover. ISD no amendment now payment chapter amendment but no amendment still you are required to pay interest on your net tax liability only. TDS chapter. and tcs chapter also tds chapter there is no amendment but one thing you have to be careful tds related i have gone ahead and told you sir tds related tds deductor when he files gstr 7 the late fee has been reduced late fee was maximum how much 100 rupees up to a maximum of 5000 rupees now made 25 rupees up to a maximum of 1000 rupees this you have to be careful when you are reading your chapter of tds in your tds chart please be careful it is 25 rupees subject to a maximum of 1000 tcs may this change has not come done return chapter i have already gone ahead and told you annual return related amendment self self certified reconciliation statement now you have to file you don't have to go ahead and get an audit done so there is no more provisions for audit you do, you just have to file gstr 9c which is self certified done and late fee related i have already gone ahead and drawn this chart and given it to you is everyone with me can we go ahead and continue with the amendments yes sir we are all over here with you till here now once you go ahead and file your annual return i had also gone ahead and taught you the next chapter was advance rolling baba advance rolling related chapter there is no amendment okay sir then i told you department will start the assessment yes sir department will start the assessment assessment mein there is no amendment now after assessment i had also taught you the chapter of audit in audit chapter also there is no amendment then sir then sir demand and recovery chapter came demand and recovery may also i told you there is no amendment demand and recovery offenses and penalties chapter also there is no amendment which is there now there were other chapters which were there after this which we had gone ahead and learned the next chapter which was there okay appeals and revision also was there demand and recovery appeals and revision appeals and revision also there is no amendment which is there 
offenses and penalties also no amendment now the next chapter which comes is place of supply place of supply i hope you guys remember when we were learning place of supply there was place of supply with respect to goods how to determine services how to determine goods related place of supply section number 10 section number 11 there is no amendment at all now section number 12 also there is no amendment section number 13 is what i want to go ahead and discuss everyone please come to your amendment booklet please come to your amendment booklet everyone in the amendment booklet ah baba nothing one minute uh, somebody is telling sir inspection search caesar baba inspection search caesar also no amendment okay now we are talking about the next chapter which is place of supply please come to the chapter of place of supply everyone please come to the chapter of place of supply student by the name your enemy says sir inspection sir caesar inspection sir caesar no amendment okay my enemy let's go ahead and start now the next chapter is place of supply everyone over here place of supply may i hope you guys remember there was section number 13 yes sir we remember i will go ahead and show you directly in the chart section number 13 which was telling you how to determine place of supply with respect to services yes sir place of supply with respect to services may there was performance based services performance based services may government have gone ahead and made one small change which is there listen to me carefully tell me one thing one indian shipping company is there we have one ship we have sent the ship this is indian shipping company okay indian shipping company ka one ship went from india to supposingly us in us the ship ka repair was done and the ship came back i hope you guys remember i hope you guys remember section number 13 3 went ahead and told services supplied in respect of goods which are made physically available means if your ship has gone from india outside india and the services were done outside india the place of supply will be outside india place of supply will be outside india that is usa now just imagine supplier is outside india recipient is in india for importation of service the place of supply has to be in india yes everyone sir when you read importation of service ka definition it says supplier is outside india recipient is in india and the place of supply is also in india then the play then it will become import of service and the indian shipping company will pay the gst under rcm because it's a importation of service rcm may you have to pay gst but here what was happening supplier is in us yes sir in our example the supplier is in us recipient is in india yes sir indian shipping company has taken the service they have gone ahead and sent the ship outside india repair work maintenance repair overall services are done outside india because the place of supply was outside india it was because the place of supply was coming outside india it was not becoming importation of service and hence indian government was not getting the gst under reverse charge mechanism and hence government went ahead and did one small change government went ahead and did one change government told the place of supply will not be determined by section number 133 and government went ahead and notified in section number 1313 the place of supply as the location of recipient can you tell me in this scenario if place of supply becomes the location of recipient government just got the place of supply shifted from here to here and now when the place of supply becomes india supplier is outside india recipient is in india place of supply is in india it becomes <coughs> importation of service and the indian company will pay the gst under reverse charge mechanism that's all is the amendment government went ahead and told now earlier with respect to aircraft government have to had told now government using the power under section number 1313 13, to prevent double taxation and non taxation government told the effective utilization or the enjoyment of the service has happened in india the place of supply shall be the location of recipient of service which is in india and hence the indian shipping company now has to pay the gst under rcm
that's all is the amendment which is done whenever supply of maintenance repair overall services are happening with respect to ship and other vessel earlier it was done for aircraft now government have done it for ship aircraft ship and other vessels also their engine component etc when maintenance repair overall services happening place of supply shall be the location of recipient just imagine now indian shipping company indian shipping company sending its ship from india to the us supplier is outside india recipient is in india government shifted the place of supply also in india it will become an importation of service and gst has to be paid in rcm quickly tell me did you guys get the change over here did you guys understand the change which the government have done is the point 100 percent clear to all yes sir we all got it now mro service always remember in your exam also if they go ahead and give you maintenance repair overall service always now with respect to aircraft it was there earlier also now with respect to ship the place of supply shall be the location of recipient and hence now this service is coming under importation of service and the indian shipping company will have to pay the gst under rcm now your thought might be sir what if us ka one company is there and their ship is coming to india baba us ka company when they are sending their ship to india sub uh, sub and india may one company is going ahead and doing the maintenance repair overall of this ship then sir that time the supplier is in india recipient of the service is outside india baba in that scenario everyone over here suppliers in india recipient is outside india place of supply place of supply here if you see already earlier also it was told whenever something is coming temporarily into india for repair treatment or process then location of recipient of service earlier also it was told so in case of export of service so place of supply is outside india and this company if they pay us foreign currency it becomes our service to them becomes export of service and gst uh export of service and baba lut you can give or you can pay igst and take the igst ka refund that was there earlier only the main amendment has come wherein government was seeing a problem in importation of service and hence government went in and told whenever maintenance repair overall services are done with respect to ship and aircraft location of recipient will become the place of supply they got the place of supply shifted to india and hence now they can collect the gst under reverse charge mechanism yes sir point is clear and that is the amendment which has come over here everyone to your amendment thing place of supply in respect of maintenance repair overall services always remember mro services related ships or aircraft related it shall always be recipient of service that will become the place of supply government used the power under section number 1313 and notified the place of supply as the location of the recipient are we all clear with this point i want everyone to quickly give me a heads up is the point clear can we go ahead yes sir we are all clear let's go ahead next the next one is satellite launch services everyone satellite launch services i will tell you satellite launch services means transportation of goods ka services satellite is a goods and whenever transportation of goods ka services are given i hope you guys remember in transportation of goods if you see over here sir transportation of goods ka services may always destination of such goods becomes the place of supply so for an example us ka nasa is there nasa went ahead and told antrix limited in india there is antrix limited in india and nasa went ahead and told antrix limited sir we have one satellite which is there uh, can you put the satellite in a rocket and send it to the space now listen to me very carefully supplier is in india recipient is outside india sir place of supply in case of transportation of goods we go ahead and apply section number 139 whenever it's an international customer so sir place of supply space which is outside india 
and if this company goes ahead and pays you for x sir my services become zero rated supply do you guys remember that yes sir yes sir we remember whenever antrix corporation is going ahead and giving services although now although now satellite launch services are exempted but even though it is exempted it is still zero rated supply and you get the benefit of zero rating you can claim, claim itc ka refund or if you have paid igst then igst ka refund also can be claimed so here antrix limited is going ahead and launching satellite for nasa supposingly supplier is outside supply is in india antrix limited is in india recipient is outside india place of supply is outside india the satellite is going outside india to the space and if you receive foreign convertible currency in that scenario it's an export of service and it will be zero rated supply now this circular was there earlier also now they went ahead and told what about nsil new space india limited what about them sir if they are also going ahead and doing the same treatment will be done that is being clarified sir see over here everyone satellite launch services provided by nsil then sir see if they are providing to domestic customer but our domestic customer related for so for an example uh satellite launch services are given to by antrix suppliers in india and the company who wants the satellite to be sent to the space is also in india if both are in india in that scenario so this service is exempt however when they go ahead and provide the services to a customer who is outside india even though it's an exempt service but still the supplier the antrix limited which is going ahead and providing the satellite launch services can very well go ahead and claim the benefit of zero rated supply yes sir this was there earlier only now they went ahead and asked sir representations have been received for issuance of clarification re rec recognizing satellite launch services by messrs new space india limited and sil a wholly government owned subsidy under the administrative control of department of space to international customer as export of service they went ahead and clarified with respect to antrix limited we had clarified that whenever international customer ko you are going ahead and providing satellite launch services those are export of service now if instead of antrix limited nsil is also providing to international customer even though it's an exempt service but still it is an export of service and it qualifies for zero rated supply the supplier nsil can take the itc ka refund or if he has not given a bond paid igst igst ka refund shall also be admissible anyways igst is not applicable only because exempted it's an exempt service everyone clarification it has been clarified that by uh, this circular that satellite launch services by antrix corporation provided outside india and such supply meets the requirement of 2 clause 6 means export of service ka definition supplies in india recipient is outside india place of supply space outside india and you are receiving foreign convertible currency you both are not mere establishment of distinct person it becomes export of service constitutes export of service and is zero rated supply council went ahead and told the as recommended by council it is clarified that satellite launch services by nsil are similar to as done by antrix corporation and the set circular is applicable to nsil also i'll tell you the simple crux antrix limited or nsil going ahead and providing satellite launch services to domestic customer always remember it's an exempt service sir satellite launch services provided to international customer it is always export of service and zero rated supply ka benefit can be claimed whether it is done by nsil or it is done by antrix both ka case mein always remember this is the point sharp clear to all can we go ahead everyone yes sir we are all clear with this point let's go ahead that's all is the amendment place of supply section number 13 mein i have gone ahead and made the change sir mro services provided with respect to ship and aircraft always remember aircraft related it was there earlier also ship related now introduced and they have told place of supply always location of recipient in your exam you see maintenance repair overall services provided with respect to aircraft or you see with respect to ship please be careful place of supply always shall be location of recipient 
सैटेलाइट लॉन्च सर्विसेस इंटरनेशनल कस्टमर जीरो रेटेड सप्लाई इफ इट फुलफिल्स द डेफिनेशन इफ इट फुलफिल्स द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ सर्विस डोमेस्टिक कस्टमर ऑलवेज इट इज एग्जाम वेदर प्रोवाइडेड बाय अंतरिक्ष कॉर्पोरेशन और प्रोवाइडेड बाय एन एस आई एल डन सर आई बिलीव दिस कैन बी ए पॉइंट एम आर ओ सर्विसेस कैन बी ए पॉइंट विच इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जाम प्लीज बी केयरफुल इन द एग्जाम नाउ before i go ahead and jump to the next chapter which is export under gst i want to first teach you refunds under gst baba refund chapter mein there is an amendment please come to the next amendment which is in the chapter of refund page number everyone 38 please come to the refunds wala amendment now refund chapter refund chapter mein there is an amendment amendment i want to go ahead and explain from the chart please come to the chart of refunds everyone please come to the chart of refund everyone रिफंड का चार्ट में एवरी वन नाउ आई विल टेल यू ऑल द अमेंडमेंट टूगेदर ठीक है लिसन आई होप यू गाइज रिमेंबर वेन एवर एनी पर्सन वॉन्ट्स टू क्लेम ए रिफंड ही हैज टू गो एड एन अप्लाई विद इन हाउ मच टाइम सर ए पर्सन हैज टू गो एड एन अप्लाई फ्रॉम द रेलिवेंट डेट विद इन टू ईयर्स ए पर्सन हैज टू गो एड एन अप्लाई फॉर रिफंड विद इन हाउ मेनी ईयर्स विद इन टू ईयर्स फ्रॉम द रेलिवेंट डेट डन सर सर रेलेवेंट डेट वॉट इज द रेलेवेंट डेट रेलेवेंट डेट इन केस ऑफ रिफंड जनरली इट इज द डेट ऑफ पेमेंट सर डिफरेंट रेलेवेंट डेट्स आर देयर बट जनरली द रेलेवेंट डेट इज द डेट ऑफ पेमेंट ये सर द डेट ऑफ पेमेंट इज द रेलेवेंट डेट फ्रॉम विच विद इन टू इयर्स यू हैव टू गो एड एंड क्लेम ए रिफंड सो फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल आई वेंट एड एंड मेड द पेमेंट ऑफ टैक्स ऑन फर्स्ट जनवरी 2021. Can you tell me by when can I claim the refund? You can go ahead and claim the refund within two years. You have to file an application within two years. Listen to me carefully now. You know what happened. Now see over here, everyone. For an example, you have done wrong classification and paid extra tax. You have done a wrong classification, and you have paid extra tax. Do you guys remember section number 77 goes ahead and says? that sir for an example i classified one transaction as intra state and i paid cgst and sgst by mistake 10000 rupees 10000 rupees cgst 10000 sgst by mistake section number 77 in your demand and recovery chapter if i am not wrong i have told you that sir this wrong tax i paid by mistake actually i should have paid igst I should have paid IGST twenty thousand, but by mistake I thought it to be intra, and I paid CGST and SGST. So they had gone ahead and told, you can pay the correct tax, you can pay the correct tax, and wrong tax you can claim a refund. Do you guys recall till here? Quickly give me a heads up. Do you guys recall till here that sir, if you had paid a wrong tax, wrong tax you have to take a refund. and correct igst has to be paid it means when i paid cgst and igst by mistake but on that transaction i had to pay igst igst i have to go ahead and pay and this cgst and igst which i had paid by mistake i have to take a refund yes sir we remember now the question which came was sir you can go ahead and claim a refund within 2 years within 2 years from the date of payment now sir date of payment is it sir so i will claim a refund of this 20000 no this 20000 ka refund i should see this two years to claim the refund means to file the refund application from the date of payment of incorrect tax or from the date of payment of correct tax for an example i paid the correct tax on 1st january 2022 so the question which was asked was you have to apply for refund within 2 years from here or within 2 years from the payment of wrong tax government went ahead and clarified very simple government told you have to go ahead and claim your refund within 2 years from the date of payment of tax the correct tax basically you can write over here from the date of payment of correct tax means when you had paid the correct tax 
So if you have gone ahead and paid the correct tax over here, from here within two years, you have to go ahead and file your refund application RFD01. Quickly give me a heads up. Did you guys get this point? Is everyone clear with this point? Yes, sir. We all got this point. Let's go ahead. I want to go ahead and show you this point over here in your section number, rule number 89. Everyone over here, rule number 89 says, sir, any person claiming for refund under section number here, rule number 89, 1A has been inserted, which says any person claiming refund under section number 77 in respect of transaction considered interstate, which was subsequently held to be interstate, may apply before two years from the date of payment on interstate means when you go ahead and pay the correct tax. Okay. File an application RFD 01. Now, I have gone ahead and given one example. For an example, Ram a supplier went ahead and paid a transaction pay intrastate and paid CGST as GST on 20th of May 2021. Sir, he went ahead and paid wrong tax on 20th May 2021. Later, it discovered that it is interstate and IGST was paid on 20th of January 2022. 22. Sir, 20th Jan 2022. Now, sir, two years for filing the refund application will be applicable from this date or this date. Can you guys tell me everyone? Can everyone tell me from which date he has to go ahead and file the refund application now? Quickly tell me from which date he has to go ahead and file the refund application. Sir, refund application has to be filed from 20th Jan 2022 from here within two years. See over here everyone. Now two years for filing the refund application will be calculated from 20th Jan 2022. That is the date of payment of correct tax and not 20th May when the wrong tax was paid. Done sir, we got it. I have gone ahead and given the crux of the amendment over here. Listen to me very carefully. Time limit to for two years for filing the refund application for refund of wrongly paid tax shall be from the date of correct payment and not from the date of payment of wrong tax. Everyone over here now, listen to me very carefully. This was the wrong tax paid. Wrong tax, correct tax means here you paid CGST, SGST. Here you went ahead and paid the correct IGST. Now this CGST, SGST ka refund, you can claim within two years from this date. That's it. Are we clear? Priyanka, they are going ahead and giving the refund of the wrong tax only. But from which date? From this date, you have to see two years. Yes, sir. We got it. Let's go ahead. Next. Everyone over here. Now, this section, this, it's, there is a proviso which is there. Let's read the proviso. Provided that the said application as regarded, as regards to the payment of tax on interstate before coming into force of this sub rule, this sub rule did not come into force. This sub rule came into force on 24th of September 2021. Okay, now listen to me very carefully. Rule number 89 1A came into force on 29th of September. What is the date? 24th of September 2021. You know what happened? Now, sir, I had paid CGST, SGST. Okay, might be on 1st of January 2020. But then I came to know about it and wrong tax was paid on this date so i corrected my mistake and correct tax i went ahead and paid on 1st of september 2021 sir i have already paid the igst now sir two years to be calculated from which date because this section only became effective rule number 89 1a became effective from 24th of september 2021 but sir the mistakes which we already corrected. We had paid the wrong tax here. We have paid the correct tax over here. IGST paid. We want to claim a refund. 
फॉर दिस टैक्स का रिफंड फॉर विच आई जी एस टी इज ऑलरेडी पेड बिफोर दिस सेक्शन केम टू ईयर्स विल बी एप्लीकेबल फ्रॉम विच डेट सर तो गवर्नमेंट वेंटेड एंड टोल्ड टू ईयर्स यू हैव टू सी फ्रॉम द डेट दिस रूल सब रूल केम इन टू पिक्चर सी ओवर ईयर एवरी वन प्रोवाइडेड दैट द सेट एप्लीकेशन मे एज रिगार्ड्स टू एनी पेमेंट ऑन इंटरेस्टेड बिफोर कमिंग ऑफ दिस सब रूल मीन्स यू हैव ऑलरेडी पेड द करेक्ट टैक्स बिफोर द सब रूल केम then be before the expiry of 2 years from the date when this sub rule came into force it means for this tax ka refund you can apply from this date within how many years 2 years i hope everyone is clear yes sir point is clear by mistake we had paid some wrong tax correct tax also paid but this sub rule had not come now this sub rule have come 2 years to apply from when the day this sub rule came from that day within 2 years apply for a refund and take this wrong tax ka refund no problem government will give it to you quickly give me a heads up was i clear with this everyone are we all clear with rule number 89 sub rule 1a is the point clear my belief they can go ahead and ask you any one of this example say one example are we all clear with this point yes sir we all got it let's go ahead now please come back to your chart everyone Please come back to your chart, everyone. Please come back to your chart. Now, refund me. Yes, sir. We remember. We remember that we have to apply for refund within how much time? We have to go ahead and apply for refund within two years. Within two years, you have to go ahead and apply for refund. Now, listen to me very carefully. I paid my tax on first January two thousand and twenty, date of payment of tax. That old. Interstate, interstate, which I thought, forget it. Now we are moving to the next one, sir. I paid the tax on first of January. Two years may I have to go ahead and claim a refund. I am not talking about interstate, interstate. I am just telling from the relevant date you have to go ahead and claim refund within how much time? Two years. Two years gets over when? First January two thousand twenty-one. First January two thousand twenty-two. First January two thousand twenty-two, the two years gets over. You know what happened? Okay, basically, two years means by thirty-first December two thousand twenty-two, your two years gets over over here. You know what happened? You have to apply for refund within two years. You applied for refund on twenty-fifth of December two thousand and twenty-two. Listen to me carefully, everyone. now once you apply for a refund the officer will go ahead and take 15 days to acknowledge within 15 days he will acknowledge and say that sir you will file your refund application rfd01 you file officer went ahead and took 10 days ka time and after 10 days he gave you an acknowledgement in gst rfd02 then to no problem No problem. Your refund application is admitted. You had applied within two years. Very good. Quickly tell me, everyone. Are everyone? Quickly tell me. Quickly tell me, everyone. Now, for an example, instead of giving the acknowledgement, if there is a deficiency, if there is a deficiency, the officer will go ahead and give you a deficiency memo in GST RFD. 03 do you guys recall till here quickly go ahead and tell me do you guys recall that sir if i apply for refund and there is some deficiency then one deficiency memo will come in rfd 03 do you guys recall till here do you guys recall till here yes sir we recall that whenever we go ahead and file an application we have to file the application within 2 year we file the application in rfd 01 officer are baba 20 okay 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 21 done 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 clear now theek hai thank you 31st december 21 and 20 and 21 done is this point clear till here deficiency memo will be given to you 
and if there is a deficiency yes sir if there is a deficiency deficiency memo will be given once a deficiency memo is given that your refund application has been re there is some deficiencies in your refund application what do you have to do now sir we have to go ahead and file a fresh refund application people you you paid your tax on this date two years gets over on 31st december 2021 you filed your refund application on 25th of december 2021 after you filed your refund application there were some deficiencies and one deficiency memo was given after for an example 10 days the officer took 10 days and supposingly on 5th of january 2022 he gave you a deficiency memo once a deficiency memo is given you have to file a fresh refund application in rfd01 yes sir we remember but now you can't file the refund application because two years is already over here am i clear with this point that you will not be able to file a fresh refund application because two years for filing the refund application is already over. Quickly tell me, did you guys understand this point? I want everyone to give me a heads up that yes, sir, we got this point that two years is already over till here. And we will not be able to file a refund application. Yes, quickly tell me everyone. Yes, sir. We will not be able to file a refund application because two years is over. You know what government went ahead and did now? Government told Ramesh, this 10 days which the government has taken will be given more to you. Means that from the time you file the refund application till the date the deficiency is being communicated to you. If the officer has taken 10 days, 10 more days extra will be given to you. And now my question is, if 10 more days are given to you, will you be able to file the fresh refund application? Yes, sir. The refund application will not be time barred. 10 days ka addition will be given to you. Means the government is telling two years, say this time limit when the officer which the officer took to communicate the deficiency will be deleted and they will be giving you the extra time period of 10 more days that is being told over here see you filed a refund application officer will verify for completeness he took 15 days after 15 days application is incomplete he will give you a deficiency memo and now you have to file fresh refund application but you will say sir two years ka time limit if it is already gone then they are going ahead and telling limitation period of two years for filing refund application to exclude the time period from filing RFD 01 to the date of communication of RFD 03. Basically, the day you file the refund application till the date of RFD 03 was communicated, this date may, this 10 days, they will go ahead and give you extra now. Means this 10 days will be excluded from that two years. It means they will give you extra time of 10 more days to file your refund application. Quickly give me a heads up. Did you guys get this point now? Is my point clear to all? Did you guys 100% understand this? Yes, sir. We all got it. This is the amendment which has come. Everyone over here. Listen to me carefully. See over here, they are telling rule number rule number 90 which talks about the acknowledgement see deficiency where any deficiencies are noticed the proper officer communicates the deficiencies to the applicant in rfd03 through the common portal requiring him to file a fresh refund application provided that the time limit for from the date of filing the refund till the date of communication of deficiencies shall be excluded from the period of two years in respect of any fresh refund claim filed by the applicant after rectification basically this 10 days ka time limit will be provided to you extra it means two years may say this 10 days will be excluded and you will be given the extra period of 10 days yes sir we all got it that is what is being told over here this was a small amendment so in my chart everyone the first amendment wrong classification related i told you the second one time limit 
for filing a fresh refund application they have told sir from the day you file till the date of deficiency is communicated that period extra will be provided to you now my question everyone i filed a refund application there is some mistake in the refund application can i revise the refund application is there a revision which happens i filed a refund application was there a provision ever you heard about revision of a refund application did i ever teach you that refund application once filed can be revised there was no revision of refund application but now they have come up with the concept that if you have filed a refund application you have gone ahead and filed a refund application it is being acknowledged also but there was no gst rfd 0405 or any gst rfd 08 or rfd 06 it was not passed refund order was not passed or any notice was not given to you till that time if you want you can go ahead and withdraw your refund application everyone over here now applicant before issuance of rfd 01 rfd 04 that is your provisional refund order rfd 06 refund sanction order or rejection order payment order sir rfd 07 or rfd 08 they are going ahead and telling before issuance of all this refund application can be withdrawn by filing rfd 01w new form introduced if you have filed a refund application but you see that there is some mistake you can now withdraw the refund application by filing what rfd 01w yes sir we are all clear simple you have filed a refund application sir tell me one thing i filed my refund application rfd 01 theek hai as soon as you file your refund application quickly tell me one thing don't you remember if you have gone ahead and filed a refund application for amount of input tax credit then e credit ledger was debited if you have gone ahead and filed an refund application of 1 lakh 1 lakh was debited if you have filed a refund application for refund of your e cash balance e cash balance will be debited yes sir whenever we file a refund application amount is debited in the e cash ledger और क्रेडिट का रिफंड का केस में ई क्रेडिट लेजर में इट विल बी डेबिटेड सर आई विद्रॉ माई रिफंड एप्लीकेशन वेन यू वॉन्ट टू विद्रॉ फाइल आर एफ डी जीरो वन डब्ल्यू एंड वॉट एवर वॉज डेबिटेड विल बी री क्रेडिटेड इन योर ई क्रेडिट लेजर और ई कैश लेजर में इट विल बी री क्रेडिटेड वेन यू पुट द रिफंड एप्लीकेशन अमाउंट डेबिटेड when you withdraw the refund application amount will be recredited that's all is being told see over here everyone on withdrawal the amount which was debited in your e cash or e credit ledger shall be recredited quickly tell me everyone are all the three refund related amendment clear to all of you number 1 intra state held as inter state the day you pay the correct tax from that day within 2 years you have to apply deficiency memo communicated refund application filed deficiency memo communicated the gap which was there that gap extra will be provided to you for filing a refund application third one withdrawal of refund can be done refund application can be done before the officer goes ahead and passes any order under rfd 04 5 6 7 and 8 before any order is passed you can withdraw your refund application by filing rfd 01w when you withdraw whatever amount was debited in your e credit ledger or e cash ledger will be recredited yes sir we all got it let's go ahead now one more small amendment four amendments were there one more small amendment in your refund ka chapter everyone listen to me very carefully relevant date say within 2 years you apply for refund correct RFD zero one filed. Yes, sir. Within two years, you apply for refund. Once you apply, acknowledgement was given. Now they will go ahead and give you a refund order, sir. From the date of filing the application, within sixty days, my refund order will come. Refund sanction order RFD zero six will come. For an example, you applied from the relevant date within two years. Yes, sir. RFD zero one. acknowledgement given in rfd 02 and 
Now refund order came. In refund order, everyone always remember. For an example, your refund was one lakh rupees. For an example, your refund was one lakh rupees. If they want to adjust anything, for little bit adjustment, whatever adjustment, partial adjustment. If nothing was there, full one lakh, full one lakh rupees. Okay, I'll do it like this. One minute. Sir, if partial adjustment nothing was there, 1 lakh rupees ka RFD 06 was given. 05 mein payment order was given. Sir, if 1 lakh may say they want to adjust, might be or some demand etc. is pending and they want to adjust 50,000, then 50,000 they will adjust and they will give remaining 50,000 ka payment order. And all these things they will mention in your RFD 06 only. Okay? Sir, if they want to go ahead and adjust the com complete amount then, then 1 lakh rupees, if 1 lakh rupees is adjusted and nothing has to be paid for you, when they adjust for complete adjustment, they will give you RFD 07 may, part A may they used to inform you that sir, we have completely adjusted your refund. And here in this scenario, RFD 06 was not given. Are we all clear with this? Everyone quickly tell me. For complete adjustment, they used to go ahead and inform you in part A of RFD 07. This is being told in the law. This is being told in the law. That if a person applies for a refund within two years in RFD 01, then sir, acknowledgement will be given. And then what will happen? Once the refund is being sanctioned, what they will do? 1 lakh rupees, supposedly RFD 06 may they will put, they will adjust whatever amount is there and the remaining payment order will be given. Sir, 1 lakh say 50,000 adjusted, then for adjustment, there was no RFD 07 given. But if completely adjustment was done, then they used to go ahead and inform you in RFD 07 part A. Government went ahead and made one simple thing. They told in RFD 07 part A, adjustment are not required, not required to be informed. Let's do one simple thing. Let's simply go ahead and issue RFD 06 only. In RFD 06, you can show 1 lakh rupees was there, refund sanction. 1 lakh rupees is adjusted and we are not paying you anything. Simple amendment done. Part A, RFD 07, no more required to be given. Not required to be given. Instead, in RFD 06 only, officer will inform you a 1 lakh rupees refund sanction, 1 lakh rupees adjusted. For complete adjustment, Part A, RFD 07 will not be used now. Is my amendment clear to all? Did you guys get this amendment now? First of all, quickly tell me, are we all clear with this amendment that if any old dues etc is there adjustment adjustment ka details adjustment related details no more required to be given in part a of rfd 07 yes sir we are all clear now listen to me very carefully everyone adjustment details are no more required in part b part a of rfd 07 that's it okay now for an example, you applied for a refund and here refund was sanctioned. For an example, 1 lakh rupees ka refund was sanctioned. But the commissioner says this refund sanction order which is there against this the department will go for an appeal. And I hope you guys remember whenever the department wants to go for an appeal. What the department will go ahead and do is, this 1 lakh rupees, they will not adjust. As of now, appeal ka, appeal mein they will go, they will fight. Later, we will see what to do. But now, for the time being, they want to withhold. Yes, sir, withholding will be done and this 1 lakh will be withhold and you will not be paid anything. This withholding ka detail will now... Not be given in part B RFD 07. It was given in part B RFD 07. 
now it will be given in part a of rfd07 part a rfd07 will be used whenever they want to withhold and keep your refund department is telling we want to go for an appeal we will not give you a refund because we know you are going to lose in the appeal we will withhold your refund now for withholding they will use this part a of rfd07 theek hai appeal ka result came appeal ka result came and department lost when department lost the appeal department has to release yes sir withheld refund withheld refund when released you will be informed in part b rfd 07 earlier it was part a uh, now ha huh, withheld refund okay no now they are going to use part b of the st rfd 07 so whenever they withhold they will go ahead and give you the withholding ka details in part a of rfd 07 whenever they release the withheld refund they will give you the details in they will go ahead and issue an order rfd 07 part b see over here everyone withholding of refund see earlier order for release one minute Ha. Huh. Earlier order for withholding the refund was given in part B. Now the same will be given in part A. So whenever they are going ahead and withholding, withholding the details will be given in part A. And whenever they want to release the withheld refund, they will give you in part B of RFD zero seven. Is my point clear to all? Quickly give me a heads up. Are we all clear with this point? Quick, 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 everyone. Did you guys get this point that whenever? Department will withhold your refund. They will give you the detail in part A, and whenever they release the withheld refund, they will really give an order in part B. Yes, sir, we all got it. Now, refund me, refund me. These are the amendments which are there. The first amendment, people, the first first amendment which is there, sir, wrong tax paid, correct tax when you pay. From that day, you have to go ahead and apply. In case of section number seventy-seven, voila. Wrong tax paid, interest rate held. Now interest rate from the day you pay the correct tax from that day within two years. ठीक है सर 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 रिफंड का सैंक्शन ऑर्डर अर्लियर आरएफडी जीरो सेवन पार्ट ए वाज यूज्ड फॉर सर एडजस्टमेंट. Now this will not be used for adjustment anymore. ठीक है डन सर नेक्स्ट नो सच ऑर्डर इन पार्ट ए विल बी गिवन फॉर एडजस्टमेंट ऑफ रिफंड. नेक्स्ट सर विदोल्डिंग का डिटेल they will give you the detail in part a whenever they release the refund they will give you the details in part b next sir acknowledgement deficiency memo is communicated from the day you file the refund application till the date of communication of uh, deficiency memo the duration which was there that will be added in your two years for filing the refund application sir refund can be with, with, withdrawn also you can withdraw your refund application by filing rfd01 w Whenever you withdraw, whatever amount was debited in your e-credit ledger or your e-cash ledger will be re-credited. That's all is the amendment. See over here, everyone. Number one, this amendment over here. Number two, deficiency memo related amendment. Number three, withholding ka detail will be given in part A. Release ka detail will be given in part B. And sir, whenever you want, you can withdraw by filing RFD zero one W. Let's go ahead, everyone over here. So always remember, sir, refund sanction was done one lakh rupees, but department thinks that your amount should be withheld. Department wants to go for an appeal. That time department will withhold the amount, and whenever the amount is being released, they will go go ahead and give you the detail in part B. Yes, sir, we all got it, people. Can we go ahead? Yes, sir. We all go ahead, got it. Harish, if you want it once again, anyways, I'll be uploading on YouTube. Please watch it once again. ठीक है? चलो. Now, as of now, once again is not possible. Let's go ahead. <coughs> Please watch it once again. You will be able to understand. Here we are done with all your GST related amendments. Congratulations, everyone. Quickly give me a heads up. Did you guys understand all the GST related amendments? 
can i go ahead and quickly summarize all the gst related amendments for you guys so that we can move to customs can we all do it together yes sir let's do it together everyone over here now we started learning gst with goods or services goods or service has to be supplied supply can be either interstate supply or intrastate supply inter or intra inter or intra gst will be levied once gst is levied ah student says sir export of service related amendment you missed it yes 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 let's first read that export of service related amendment okay theek hai this amendment actually i have already done with the refund but still i'll tell you thank you aditya chalo aditya uh, everyone over here now sir rule number 96 which was talking about export out of india when you go ahead and export the goods do you guys remember exports under gst whenever you export the goods export can be done by payment of igst also and export can be under lut also yes sir we remember everyone listen to me very carefully whenever it is whenever you go ahead and export and you have given an lut or bond you want to claim a refund of itc itc ka refund is given by the gst department theek hai done sir now if you have gone ahead and you are go, you have gone ahead and exported okay i'll take it this way if you have gone ahead and exported and you have paid igst on the export this igst ka refund is not given by the gst department this igst ka refund is given by the customs department theek hai done sir who will give the refund the customs department gives the refund if you see when you export the goods on payment of igst that igst ka refund is given by the customs department basically the proper officer of gst who is sitting at the customs he will go ahead and give you this igst ka refund basically when you are going ahead and exporting you will go ahead and file your shipping bill that shipping bill which is filed is your bill is your refund application you don't have to file a rfd 01 separately done sir now this officer was this officer saw that ramesh has gone ahead and exported in contravention when ramesh has gone ahead and exported in contravention they will go ahead and withhold your refund or you have gone ahead and exported your gst officer who is there your gst officer who is there he has seen that ramesh ke liye we should not go ahead and give this refund we should withhold this refund this refund should be should be withheld so he will go ahead and call this guy and tell him either this officer only felt that you have gone ahead and exported the goods in contravention you have done some contravention or your gst officer wants him to withhold the refund your gst officer wants him to withhold the refund and he is telling this officer who is the the custom court don't give the refund to ramesh in that scenario your gst officer will go ahead and give you a will give you a withholding ka order can you guys tell me withholding ka order will be passed in which form he will inform you know the that your refund igst ka refund which had to be given by the custom court ka officer will be withheld now can you tell me this withheld ka detail will be given withholding ka detail by your gst officer will be given to you in which form sir here also the withhold refund ka details will be given in gst rfd 07 part a theek hai later if he realizes that he should release the refund withheld refund should be released to you then sir he will first go ahead and pass gst in in case of release of the withheld refund he will go ahead and pass gst rfd 07 part b may he will go ahead and inform you then he will go ahead and pass rfd 06 refund sanction order is my point clear to all quickly tell me the same thing whenever your refund is withheld whenever your refund is withheld by the customs department the igst ka refund then also your gst officer will inform you in gst rfd 07 part a may and whenever the withheld refund is being released 
he will go ahead and tell you in RFD 07 part B. The same thing has been told over here in exports also. I have gone ahead and given the crux. Withholding of refund shall be in part A. Earlier it was done in part B. Now it is done in part A. And whenever ref refund which was withheld will be released, they will first inform you in part B of GST RFD 07. Then a refund sanction order will be passed. Quickly give me a heads up. Are we now done with all the ref amendments relating to GST everyone? <coughs> Yes, sir. We all got it. Let's go ahead. Everyone over here now. Please come to before I start with customs and FTP. Before I start with customs and FTP, let me go ahead and quickly summarize for you guys. Everyone over here. We started learning GST with goods and service. Goods and service, no amendment. Supply. Goods and service has to be supplied. Supply can be interstate or intrastate. No amendment. Then Sir, inter or intra, GST will be levied. Once GST is levied, composition levy, no amendment. Then you will go ahead and see exemption. Exemption, I have gone ahead and told you that, sir, exemptions may, some amendments are there. Yes, sir. Then GST has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. Here, the amendment is rule number 23. Consequential amendment due to section number 30 ka amendment. Nothing amendment. Next. Sir, how will you collect and pay? How, uh, he, he has to calculate GST is equal to value of supply into rate of tax. No amendment over here. Once you know the value, you will prepare tax invoice, credit note, debit note. Sir, tax invoice chapter may one small amendment is there. E-invoicing now made not applicable to government department and local authority. And there was a small circular was there, which I went ahead and told you relating to dynamic QR code. Yes, sir. We remember. Now, sir, you will go ahead and maintain your accounts and records and you will go ahead and send the goods to the other person with a e-way bill in accounts and records chapter i have told you sir section number 35.5 is now being deleted no more audit by charter accountant or cost accountant sir e-way bill rule number 138 e amended i have told you amendment in rule number 138 e basically outward supply related blocking will be done inward supply related E-way bill portal shall not be blocked for you. Done, sir. Once you maintain your accounts, your liability will come. Time of supply, no amendment. Once you go ahead and maintain your accounts, your liability came in the time of supply. You will use your input tax credit. Sir, the input tax credit chapter, no amendment. Then we have job work and, sir, ISD. Always remember, in your job work chapter, I have told you ITC04, the frequency has been changed now. Half yearly and annually has been done. It is no more quarterly. Done, sir. Once you use your input tax credit, the next is payment of taxes. Payment of taxes, actually no amendment. Section number 50, still you pay on net tax liability only. The next one over here, sir, is TDS. TDS may please be careful. Now it is 25 rupees per day. Maximum is how much, sir? Maximum is how much? 1000 rupees. Yes, sir. This late fee was being changed. TCS, no amendment. TDS, I've told you the amendment. Next, sir, payment. And then you will go ahead and file your return. TDS related return, TDS related amendment I've covered in the chapter of return only. Basically, late fee for your TDS return GSTR 7, I've told in the chapter of return. In return chapter, annual return, I've already gone ahead and told you the amendment. And sir, also I've got annual return and self-reconciliation uh, self-certified reconciliation statement plus i have gone ahead and told you about the late fee late fee ka chart which is there i'll upload on rameshsunni.com free resources you can download from there answer now after this the next amendment which is there in the, in the chapter of place of supply which i have told you the place of supply may section number 13 13 may mro services ke liye they have gone ahead and notified the place of supply with respect to mro service shall be location of recipient and NSIL Kelly also they have gone ahead and told New Space India Limited. Same as Anthrix, international customer when they are providing the service, it is export of service and domestic customer anyways exempted. Here I have gone ahead and told you both of them, NSIL related, the circular. Then we have refund chapter and we have export of service, export under GST wala chapter, which I have gone ahead and told you the amendment. Sir, refund ka chapter mein, 
Section number 77 related from the date of payment of correct tax, you have to file the refund application within two years. Yes, sir. We remember that. Secondly, deficiency memo may from the date of filing of refund application till the date of communication of deficiency memo, whatever the differential period is there, that will be provided to you extra. Third, refund application can be now withdrawn RFD 01W. Fourth, sir, whenever you are going ahead and withholding the refund, withholding refund ke liye RFD 07 part A may detail will be given for withholding and whenever it is released, release ka case may RFD 07 part B may details will be given. This amendment I told in refund chapter also exports under GST may also same amendment. Quickly give me a heads up. Are we all sharp clear with all the amendments relating to GST over here? Can I move to the customs amendment now? So our customs and FTP, very, very few amendments are there. Very, very few amendments are there. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and quickly see all of them. Everyone over here now. In customs and FTP, the first, first chapter which is there. People, I'll take 15, 20 minutes. Let's concentrate and understand all of them now. Okay. Section number 25. Do you guys remember section number 25 in your custom chapter? Chapter number 1, levy and exemption. Levy and exemption, the first chart which was there in your customs. In that, section number 25 may, section number 25, 4A has been introduced. Section number 25 4A, what does it say? Section number 25 4A may, they have gone ahead and told that if there is a conditional exemption which is issued, sir, government issued one conditional exemption for an example on 1st May 2021, government issued an exemption which is a conditional exemption. Means an exemption is given which is subject to a condition. It was issued on 1st May 2021. Government have gone ahead and fixed the time limit of expiration means expiry time limit has been fixed. Government is selling a conditional exemption. Once it is issued, it will be valid for two years. First May 2021, first May 2022, first May 2023. After this date, whichever 31st March 2024 comes till here it shall be valid. It is telling till 31st March after the expiry of two years the conditional exemption shall be valid unless so for an example government issued a conditional exemption but the expiry date is not mentioned. If expiry date is mentioned that date will expire. If government withdraws that exemption the day it is withdrawn that date will expire. But if government did not withdraw also and expiry date is also not mentioned then then it shall expire from here you have to see one year two year after that two year whichever 31st march will come on that day the conditional exemption shall be withdrawn everyone see over here now conditional with exemption unless otherwise specified varied or assigned date be valid up to 31st march falling immediately after two years from the date of grant or variation everyone over here in your chart C. For an example, one notification was issued which is a conditional exemption on 1st of May. Two years gets over on 1st of May 2023. It will expire once two years gets over. After that, immediately whichever 31st March comes. 31st March 2024 chapter over. Now, sir, old notification for an example, see over here there is one proviso which is there in respect of any exemption in force as on the date on which the finance bill 2021 receives the assent of the president for an example there is an exemption which is already there finance bill 2000 uh, finance bill 2021 received the assent of the president from that day they are going ahead and telling receives the president assent the said period of two years shall be reckoned from first day of february they are telling for an example there is one conditional exemption which is there which is already there finance act 2021 received the president assent on this date for an example now they are going ahead and telling if before this any conditional exemption was issued what about that for that what about two years from which date it will be calculated they are telling already existing old notifications ke liye 
दैट टू इयर्स के लिए दे हैव टोल्ड वन टाइम लिमिट दे आर टेलिंग सर इफ देर इज एन ओल्ड नोटिफिकेशन दैट इज इशूड प्रायर टू द फाइनेंस बिल टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी वन रिसीविंग प्रेजिडेंट एसेंट बाबा वेन डिड द फाइनेंस बिल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन फाइनेंस बिल आई डोंट रिमेंबर रिसीव प्रेजिडेंट एसेंट इट रिसीव ऑन ट्वेंटी एट मार्च टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी वन ठीक है डन सो सर ट्वेंटी एट मार्च टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी वन से बिफोर इफ एनी कंडीशनल एग्जामेशन वॉज इशूड सर फॉर दिस फ्रॉम वेन दिस टू ईयर विल बी कैलकुलेटेड दे आर टेलिंग फॉर ओल्ड नोटिफिकेशन नाउ ऑन After this date, if any notification, conditional notification, exemption notification is issued, it shall be valid for two years. After that, the thirty-first March. ठीक है. What about an old notification, conditional exemption notification, which was issued here? They are telling for this that two years is to be calculated from first January. So, sir, from sir, so for an example, first January. 2021 notification was issued you have to go ahead and calculate from 1st of december 1st of february 2021 1st feb 2021 say you have to see two year one year and two year so it will be 1st feb 22 1st feb 23 and after this the 31st march comes is 31st march 23 till here This conditional exemption shall be valid. Is my point clear to all, sir? President assent for was received over here for the Finance Act, Finance Bill 2021. You have to see from first of before this, whichever before this, whichever conditional exemption notification was issued, the validity will start from first of February, and from here two years, and then. The thirty first March, it shall be valid till thirty first March two thousand and twenty three over here. Is my point clear to all? Quickly tell me, are we all clear till here? Is everyone hundred percent clear? Can we go ahead? Yes, everyone. Yes, sir. We are all clear with this point. Let's go ahead. So, new notification. Always remember, new notification which are issued. New notification related two years once it gets over after that the thirty first March sir any notification which is an old notification which was issued prior to the Finance Act two thousand twenty one receiving President assent for that you have to calculate the time period from first February two thousand and twenty one from here two years and after that the thirty first March the conditional exemption shall be expiring it shall expire. Done. Both the thing I have gone ahead and given the example also, and I have written the crux also. Let's go ahead, everyone. So in your first first chapter of uh, in your first chapter that is levy and exemption from custom duty, the only amendment is section number twenty five power to grant exemption. In that the conditional exemption related expiry period is set now. It is thirty first March following two years from the date of issue. Done, sir. The next one is. I hope you guys remember import procedure, export procedure. Do you guys remember import procedure and export procedure which we had gone ahead and learned? Yes, sir. We remember import procedure and export procedure which you had gone ahead and taught. Now, if you guys remember over here, this once, sir, section number twenty-five, twenty-nine, thirty, then thirty-one was there, then thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four was there. Now, once the goods are lying with the custodian, sir. i have to go ahead and file a bill of entry people always remember earlier the bill of entry had to be filed earlier the bill of entry had to be filed today the vessel has arrived by tomorrow evening your bill of entry should be filed that was the maximum time limit to file the bill of entry i hope you guys remember so today if the vessel arrives so for the example the vessel is arriving today that is uh, 25th of january sir 26th is a holiday then 26th no baba till 27th your bill of entry should be filed means once the vessel arrives within one day your bill of entry should be filed if the next day is a holiday then the immediate next day now there is a change which has come okay 
Now there is a change which has come. They have gone ahead and told if your vessel is arriving on 25th by 24th of January, your bill of entry has to be filed. Now no more filing of bill of entry later. Prior bill of entry means prior to arrival, one day prior to arrival, your bill of entry has to be filed. Always remember that. So 30 days prior which was there, that is still there. But bill of entry now to be filed one day prior to arrival. 30 days prior to expected date of arrival you can file. Earlier also it was there. Now also it is there. But you have to make the assessment. File your bill of entry one day prior to the arrival of the ship. See over here everyone. This is the amendment. Filing of bill of entry means bill of entry for home consumption or warehousing both. Anyone whichever you want to file to be filed before the end of the day including holiday preceding the day on which the conveyance arrives and if the board wants the cbic can go ahead and prescribe different time limit for presentation but which shall not be later than the end of the day of arrival if cbic wants cbic can extend the time but that should be the day when the boat arrives means when the ship arrives so sir what is the amendment see i'll show you by an example earlier your vessel arrived on 25th of january Okay, 26th is a holiday. 26th January is a holiday. So you had to file by 27th. Means next day you have to file. Next day is a holiday. Next to next day you file. Okay. Now, sir, your vessel arrived on 16th of August. 15th August is a holiday, but still, including holiday, you should file one day prior. So 15th, your bill of entry has to be filed. Now they have made the change over here. See. They are telling the importer shall present the bill of entry before the end of the day, including holiday, preceding the day on which the aircraft vessel or vehicle carrying the goods arrive at the custom station at which goods are to be cleared. Today the vessel is going to arrive. By yesterday, your bill of entry has to be filed. Yesterday is all day. Still, you have to file your bill of entry. Is my point clear to all? Did you guys get it? And... If the board wants to extend, the board can extend, but the extension cannot be more than the day of arrival of the vessel. Means today the vessel is arriving, the board can extend the time limit to today, but not beyond that. Government wants to clear the goods early, so early filing of bill of entry made mandatory now. Is my section number 46 amendment clear to all? Is my section number 46 amendment clear to all? This is the amendment. Filing of bill of entry has to be done prior. One day prior, your bill of entry has to be filed. Sir, what about that 30 days prior? Well, Baba, that concept is still there. 30 days prior to arrival, you can file. All those concepts are there. Now, earlier was what? Today, if the vessel is arriving, by tomorrow, end of the day, your bill of entry has to be filed. Tomorrow is all day, the next day. But now, if your vessel is arriving today, by yesterday, your bill of entry has to be filed. Done, sir. Point is clear. Always remember, late filing of bill of entry, there is a penalty. A late fee is there. And hence, if you want to pay late fee, you can file your bill of entry late. But they have told the time to file the bill of entry. Done, sir. Point is clear. Now, the next chapter, everyone over here. I hope you guys remember the first chapter in our customs was levy. Number two was import, export, transit and transshipment. Here I told you the exam amendment in section number 25. Here uh, section number uh, 46 which is relating to bill of entry the amendment is there. Third chapter was relating to classification. Classification of goods no amendment. Fourth chapter was valuation. Valuation no amendment. Fifth chapter was types of duties. This is the amendment chapter. Very, very simple amendment made in section number 9 and section number 9A. Section number 9 and section number 9A. There is a small, simple amendment which is done. Let's go ahead and quickly cover. If we are done with this amendment, customs part is done. Everyone over here. Section number 9, CVD on subsidized article. This was CVD on subsidized article. And this is anti-dumping duty everyone over here now in both the section same amendments are done let's go ahead and understand them quickly everyone over here now 
सर वॉट इज द अमेंडमेंट इन सीबीडी ऑन सब्सिडाइज आर्टिकल डू यू रिमेंबर एवरी वन इफ इंडिया आउटसाइड इंडिया से If outside India, for an example, Chinese government is there. China से one person को Chinese government was telling, hey, you manufacture the goods and send it to India. We will give you the subsidy. When subsidy was given and an injury was happening in India, India India में if there is an injury, Indian government used to impose countervailing duty. You are giving subsidy. We will impose countervailing duty. Yes, sir. We all recall that CBD on subsidized article was being imposed. CBD on subsidized article was being imposed by the Indian government. Yes, sir. So here, everyone over here. Now, whenever, for an example, Indian government told calculators pe CBD will be imposed. ठीक है इंडियन गवर्नमेंट इंपोज फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल ट्वेंटी रुपीज सब्सिडी ऑन कैलकुलेटर नाउ दिस पर्सन फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इंडिया नो दिस पर्सन फ्रॉम आउटसाइड इंडिया व्हेन ही वाज सेंडिंग द कैलकुलेटर ऑन कैलकुलेटर द सीबीडी वाज देयर यू नो व्हाट ही स्टार्टेड डूइंग ही ब्रोक द कैलकुलेटर इन पार्ट पार्ट एंड ही स्टार्टेड सेंडिंग द कैलकुलेटर इन पार्ट or he started sending from china to dubai dubai said it was coming into india and hence he was trying to contra contravent he was trying to circumvent the cbd do you guys remember that what he will do he will send the calculator into india but calculator ka name he'll change as typewriter he will change the name he will change the description of the goods he will send it to another country and from another country it will come into our country he will try to circumvent the duty do you guys remember everyone do you guys remember that this guy can do this yes sir we remember now if this guy tries to circumvent the duty by adopting this mean what he tried to do from china if calculators are coming into india calculators pay there is cvd which government has imposed you know what he did he started sending the calculators into india in parts he broke the parts and he sent or he changed the name and he sent it to india or from china he sent it to dubai and from dubai it is coming to india then government told that if a person tries to circumvent now we can impose the duty on this other product also supposing he has changed the name or he has sent it to dubai and from dubai it is coming now government told we will impose the cbd on this other item also we will start imposing on this also cbd but from which day today if government issues the notification from today it will be imposed but this guy from china would have started the circum circumvention long back yes sir and hence government told we will in, we will introduce we will introduce the cbd from which date from the date see over here everyone if there is a circumvention which is happening from which day government can impose duty on that change product means the name of the product he change description of the product he change on that name change product from when so government told government can extend the cbd to such other article also from such date not earlier than the date of initiation of inquiry as the central government may by may by notification in the official gadget specify central government told the day supposingly today government uh materialized okay we should impose this much cvd inquiry had started here so government can go ahead and make the notification effective from the day government had started the inquiry into that circumvention are we clear everyone quickly give me a heads up the first point is it clear to all retrospective imposition of cbd in case of circumvention of cbd so if cbd in case of circumvention so if there is a circumvention which is happening and government realized it today and started the inquiry here the government identified okay we should impose the cbd government can issue the notification and make the cbd effective from the day government had started the inquiry in case of circumvention of cbd on subsidized article can extend government can extend the cbd to such other articles from such date not earlier than the date of initiation of inquiry 
as the central government may by notification in the official gadget specify hence retrospective application of cbd is possible but not earlier than the date of initiation of inquiry in your exam they will tell you inquiry started on 1st january no the guy started doing circumvention on 1st january only government started inquiry on 1st february and now government is issuing the notification on 1st of march from which date can you guys tell me from which date because government started the inquiry on this date from which date can the government make the notification imposing the cvd effective can you tell me everyone from which date government can make the cvd effective quickly tell me everyone from which day government can make the cvd effective Sir, government can make the CVD effective from the date of the inquiry. From this day, if government is issuing the notification over here, but still government can make the CVD effective from 1st of January, 1st of February. Yes, sir, point is clear. Let's go ahead. Next. Now, everyone over here. From China, one guy was sending some goods to India. Okay. Chinese government gave him 20 rupees ka subsidy. So this guy was sending the goods to India. India made that goods are sold for 100 rupees. But because this guy was sending the goods to India at a and he was receiving subsidy, he was sending at a lower price. And in India, the goods were lending only at 80 rupees. Hence, Indian government imposed 20 rupees ka CVD. You know what happened? This Chinese guy. He told his government and his government told, okay, you reduce the price by further 10 rupees, we will give it to you. And they started doing the absorption. Absorption means they told, okay, Indian government, you are putting 20 rupees. No, we will absorb this 20 rupees and they further reduce the price by 20 rupees and started sending to India at 60 rupees only. And hence, everyone, hence, in India, when it is landing at 60, Indian government after charging 20 rupees also, still the goods are at 80 rupees only, still cheaper than the Indian goods. Are you guys able to understand? Absorption of duty. Whenever government sees that there is an absorption of duty which is happening, you know what happened? The Chinese guy told, okay, let Indian government start charging 20 rupees because CVD, we will go ahead and further give you a discount of further 20 rupees and we will absorb the CVD. This is known as absorption of CVD. He absorbed the effect. And now government is telling, if we see such kind of absorption, we will modify the duty and we will make this as 40 rupees. Means the CVD will be modified by the government. Modified duty will be now levied. So government is telling over here, sir, absorption. When the central government on such inquiry as it considers necessary is of the opinion that absorption of CVD imposed under subsection 1 has taken place whereby CVD so imposed is rendered ineffective. It may by modification such it may modify such duty means this duty which was 20 rupees now government will modify and make it 40. You are trying to absorb 20 rupees. Okay, we will increase our CVD. Government will increase the CVD. God, it may. Im, okay, when the central government on such inquiry as it considers necessary is of the opinion that the absorption of CVD imposed under subsection 1, government imposed CVD, has taken place, absorption was done, 20 rupees government imposed subsidy, uh, CVD on subsidized article, he told, I will reduce the price by further 20 rupees. Government is telling, it may modify such duty. The CVD will be modified to counter the effect of such absorption. You are charging further 20 rupees less. We will charge further 20 rupees more CVD. From such date, not earlier than the date of the initiation of the inquiry as the central government by notification specify. Sir, for, in, for the purpose of this subsection, absorption of CVD is said to have taken place when 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 will you call that absorption has happened when 
if there is a decrease in the export price of any article without any commensurate change in the resale price in India of such article. They are telling, sir, export price reduced. But India may resale price also. No, what happened over here? If there is a decrease in the export price of an article without any commensurate change in the resale price in India of such article imported from the exporting country or the territory. China may they reduce the price. India may the price, the person who is selling in India, he is keeping the same price. Why? Because he is telling if China says it is coming at 60, only then when government will charge 20 rupees, uh, government is charging 40 rupees, it is still coming at 100 rupees. So, if Chinese guy had actually gone ahead and reduced the price, this guy also should have changed the resale price in India, but he did not change the resale price in India. If he did not change the resale price in India, it means there is an absorption of duty which is happening. So, government is telling if there is such absorption in that scenario, we will start charging duty. We will modify the duty and we will start charging it. So, the next one is absorption. If central government on inquiries of the opinion that absorption has taken place, central government can go ahead and modify the CVD. Now, more CVD will be charged in order to countervail the effect. Next, sir, retrospectively, yes, government today if it is issuing the notification the day government had started the inquiry into such modification that the duty has been uh, that we have to modify the duty because absorption is taking place the day government had started the inquiry from that day government can start charging the government can go ahead and modify the cvd it says modification to counter the balance of effect of such absorption can be done from a date not earlier than the date of the initiation of the inquiry as the central government may by notification specify. When is it told absorption is taking place? When he has reduced the price but in India export price has reduced but in India there is no change in the price at which the goods are sold. Then it is believed that absorption has taken place or under such uh, other circumstances as may be specified in the rules. Next. Is everyone clear with absorption? Did you guys understand what do you mean by absorption? As the name suggests, as the name suggests, government imposed CVD. They went ahead and reduced the selling price to India to absorb the CVD. Is the point clear to all? Whenever absorption happens, government can go ahead and modify the duty and charge more countervailing duty. You are going ahead and giving subsidy. We will charge CVD on subsidy article. You are going ahead and absorbing the CVD also. We will go ahead and charge more CVD. Yes, sir. We all got it. Let's go ahead. Next. Sir, CVD shall not be applicable on goods when they are imported by whom? EOU or an SEZ unit. Everyone always remember one thing. See, an export oriented unit, EOU or an SEZ which is there, their main job is to export. So, government is going ahead and telling whenever they are importing, in their import, in case of their import, the CVD on subsidized article or anti-dumping duty is not being charged. However, there is no CVD, no anti-dumping duty whenever imports are done by EOU or SEZ. Why? Because ultimately, they are going to export only. So, government is telling anyways to the domestic industries, they will not harm because they are going to import and they will export. Their main job is export. But... If they clear the goods in the domestic tariff area, on the amount of goods which are being cleared, now government will charge CVD or the anti-dumping duty under 9A. Always remember this point everyone. There is no CVD or anti-dumping duty on goods which are imported by EOU or 100% SEZ unit. But if they clear the goods in the domestic tariff area, gone Baba. Whatever CVD under section number 9 or anti-dumping duty which is there now will be made applicable. See over here everyone. Non-applicability of CVD. Notwithstanding anything, any CVD which is imposed shall not apply to EOU or 100% SEZ unit unless it is specifically made applicable in the notification. If government specifically tells in the notification then it is applicable or... Such article is either cleared into the domestic tariff area or used in the manufacture of any goods that are cleared in the domestic tariff area in which 
case cvd shall be imposed on that portion of the article so cleared or used as was applicable when it was imported if you clear the goods in the domestic tariff area or you make some goods and clear the goods into the domestic tariff area then they are telling we will impose the cvd as it would have been imposed when you had imported the material into india the same thing is applicable in case of anti dumping duty also see everyone over here non applicability it will not be applicable to your your scz cvd or anti dumping duty both not applicable to scz or 100% eou unless specifically told in the notification or they clear the goods in the domestic tariff area done sir sir now how many years ke liye government can go ahead and impose uh, cvd see government can go ahead and impose a cvd for 5 years further extendable by 5 years it was there earlier now they have used the word up to 5 years means if government wants government can extend 1 2 3 how much ever years earlier it was 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 always but now government have gone ahead and deleted the word of 5 years sir it can be extended by the period of further 5 years up to 5 year the word is used means if government has imposed a cvd for 5 year now if it wants to extend it can extend by 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 4 years or 5 years at a time yes sir point is clear up to word has been used earlier it was 5 plus 5 only now it is 5 plus 1 2 3 4 5 at a time 5 years government can go ahead and end it yes sir point is clear now government went, went ahead and imposed one cvd for an example for next 5 years also or might be in this 5 year only and for in between government wants to revoke saying okay for this time the cvd will be not there the cvd on subsidized article will not be charged can temporarily government revoke the duty now the provision has been made that if the said duty is revoked temporarily the period of such revocation shall be shall not exceed 1 year at a time government can go ahead and revoke the duty temporarily for 1 year i have gone ahead and put over here period of imposition 5 years and it can be extended by further period up to 5 years theek hai temporary revocation now permissible for a maximum period of 1 year at a time 1 year revoked you can't revoke it for 2 years at a time 1 year revoked again next year if you want you can revoke but once you can go ahead and revoke only for 1 year yes sir we got it the same thing is told in section number 9a if you see over here for anti circumvention measure they have gone ahead and told the same thing absorption for anti dumping duty also they have told the same thing non applicability to a eou unit or an scz unit 5 years for the extendable up to 5 years the same words and revocation of duty temporarily can be done for a period of 1 year the same thing which are told in cvd on subsidy article the same thing has been told over here if you see over here earlier anti dumping duty was not applicable to eou now they have extended to eou also and scz also that is why i am telling it is same as the one which we have learned cvd on subsidized article the same thing over here quickly tell me everyone are we all 100% clear till here quickly tell me are we all 100% clear till here can i go ahead Yes, everyone. Are we all clear till here? Quickly tell me. Yes, sir. We are all clear. Let's go ahead. Chalo, people. People, let's take a let's take a ten minutes break. Let's take a ten minutes break. Ten thirty, I will start. I think the only remaining thing now is FTP because warehousing is done. so ftp ka whatever amendment is there we'll be doing the amendment let's take a 10 minutes break once we resume from the break we will go ahead and continue with our discussion on agriculture infrastructure and development says i know uh, too much can't go inside so you take a 10 minutes break let's take a 10 minutes break and then we'll resume sir break everyone let's take a break 10 minutes go quickly come back quickly Let's take a 10 minutes break. We'll resume after 10 minutes, everyone. 
take a 10 minute break drink some water and come back
चलो कैन वी गो अहेड एंड कंटिन्यू द क्लास एवरी वन कैन वी कंटिन्यू द क्लास इज एवरी वन बैक Yes, sir. Let's do it. <clears throat> Now, the next amendment is there in your chapter of types of duties, chapter only. Agriculture, infrastructure, and development says on import of certain items has been imposed. Government have gone ahead and imposed. agriculture infrastructure and development says on import so whenever you are going ahead and importing not on export on imports government have gone ahead and told will impose something called as agriculture infrastructure and development says basically it's a says which will be collected says means again it's a tax which will be collected whenever you import the goods and it will be used the says will be used for agriculture infrastructure and development so now you can read the crux over here for your exam purpose the icci has given only this much i don't believe it is very important for your exam because they have given a very small paragraph on it the main important crux out of the paragraph out of this paragraph i have written it down agriculture infrastructure development says is in the nature of custom duty so it is collected as a duty of custom only it is imposed on import of specified goods it will be imposed on what imposed of imposed not on all imported goods only on some specified goods it will be imposed they are not going to ask you in the exam on what goods it will be imposed because they have told examples of goods on which aidc has been imposed have been given here under only for the knowledge of the student they are not relevant for examination purpose in the statutory update they have specifically told this so number 1 it's a duty of custom which will be imposed on specified goods and the rate will be notified done sir secondly it is imposed by what finance act 2021 what is the purpose of the aidc the purpose of aidc says is that it will be used to finance the improvement of agriculture infrastructure agriculture development government is saying okay we'll take one says and we'll use it for the development of agriculture agriculture infrastructure and other development expenditure which are required government wants to promote agriculture being the backbone of the country government is selling whenever goods are imported we'll charge one says at a notified rate only on some specified product and that says will be used for agriculture infrastructure development aidc is not imposed on exported goods sir on what value it will be charged it will it will be charged on the value which is told under section number 14 that is on transaction value or the tariff value it will be imposed so sir how much do we need to know that much i have already gone ahead and told you the same thing has been told in this paragraph please read at home once sir how important it is they have gone ahead and told very little about it my opinion not very important what if to your good luck two marks ka question come you should be able to write this much aidc imposed under the finance act 2021 on imported goods import of certain goods specified goods only at notified rate and it is it will be used for agriculture infrastructure and development that's all theek hai done sir this much only is given in your statutory update so i have kept the discussion only limited to this much let's not get into more because getting into more detail i think you have lot of other things to study also yes sir point is clear types of duties ka chart mein wherever there was amendment that amend amended chart so cvd on subsidized article there was amendment so i have given the chart over here duty anti dumping duty the same amendments which have happened over here in cvd on subsidized article has happened in anti dumping duty also i have given the chart and the last if you see agriculture infrastructure and development says levied under section number 134 of the finance act four lines i have gone ahead and given for that also this much should be more than enough for you here we are done with your types of duties ka chapter everyone in customs the first chapter is levy and exemption amendment i have told you in section number 
second one importation exportation transit and transshipment amendment in section number 46 bill of entry i have told you the third one sir classification classification there is no amendment number fourth is valuation valuation chapter there is no amendment so first one second one and the fifth one which is there the types of duties types of duties may there are three amendments one is the cvd on subsidized article one is the anti-dumping duty and one is agriculture infrastructure and development cess till here whatever the amendments were there i have gone ahead and told you now now there is one sixth chapter one more additional chapter which has been introduced customs may no more amendment is there ftp ka amendment i'll discuss now there is a chapter of warehousing which is being introduced. Actually warehousing ka chapter was earlier there in your CA final ka syllabus. CS and CMA, C, CS and CMA already had it. CA final ka syllabus say it was being removed. However, we used to discuss little little about warehousing in connection with other chapters. And now the ICA has got the chapter back. They have introduced the chapter back of warehousing. Warehousing related one complete video. I have already gone ahead and uploaded on my YouTube channel warehousing the name of the chapter itself warehousing I have gone ahead and uploaded that is the recent video which I had gone ahead and uh, taken for my CA final regular batch also the same video I have uploaded because you need to learn the whole chapter the whole chapter in approximately one hour I have gone ahead and taught it in detail please follow that video warehousing ka video is already there on YouTube so you can follow that video. So warehousing ka chapter, the whole chapter, I have gone ahead and explained in that video. So the warehousing ka chapter which is there, completely I have gone ahead and told over there. I am very sure one question 100% they are going to ask. Refer the chart below. This chart also you guys can refer. Along with this chart, you can refer the YouTube lecture on, U on warehousing which is completely amended and updated for your May 22 exam. Now, let's go to the FTP. So sir, in our customs, this much only is the amendment, levy and exemption section number 25, importation and exportation, import may, bill of entry, filing date, types of duty, these three amendments, small, small amendment and warehousing ka entire chapter is an addition. I am very sure one question they will 100% ask out of it. Please watch the video on warehousing. Are we all good to go and start with FTP now? Yes, people, can we start with FTP? Yes, sir. Let's do FTP now. Everyone over here now. Foreign trade policy. Foreign trade policy which was there earlier. Foreign trade policy 2015-20 which is there was made effective till. Sir, it was made effective till what? 31st March 2021. Then 30th September 2021. Now, the same foreign trade policy has been continued. So, you don't have to learn any new foreign trade policy. The same foreign trade policy which I taught you, the same foreign trade policy is applicable for your May 22 attempt also. So, basically, the foreign trade policy 2015-20 has now been extended till 31st March 2022. Done, sir. Next, imports which were made under this advance authorization, EPCG, EOU, ESTP, Software Technology Park, Biotechnology Park, all these schemes can be whenever you used to import. Basic custom duty was anyways, all these other custom duties were anyways exempted. All these other custom duties were not being charged only. IGST and GST compensation cess was exempted till 30th of September 2021. Now, whenever you go ahead and import under advanced authorization, EPCG scheme, EOU, BSTP, or B, uh, BTP etc. There also whenever this EOU etc are importing the IGST and GST compensation says which was exempt till 30th of September 2021 has now been extended till 30th September 2022. Basically there is no amendment extension of time limit has been done. Now the next very important point over here is MEIS scheme which was there MEIS scheme which was there was not globally accepted Basically, uh, that was against the World Trade Organization ka principles which are there. World Custom Organization, the principle, it was against their principle. And hence, they have gone ahead and removed MEIS scheme from 1st of January 2021. And ROSCTL, 
basically this came no r o not r o s t c l this scheme i don't want to disc dis uh, this also a new scheme which is which is introduced but it is not applicable for exam you can write the name as remission remission of duties and taxes on export products this scheme has been introduced and this is applicable for your exam then this r o s c uh, t l which is that that is also a new scheme which is introduced but it is not applicable for exam because they have not given in the statute update so let's not go ahead and get into that we will be discussing the remission of duties and taxes on exported product basically r o d t e p r o d t e p scheme everyone please come to your r o d t e p scheme basically m e s scheme which was there was there earlier now m e s has been deleted m e s has been deleted and r o d t e p scheme has been introduced for your exam r o d t e p scheme is important i believe they should ask a three mark question sir r o d t e p scheme what is it now first of all before going ahead and telling you i have gone ahead and kept the r o d t e p ka discussion only to the extent it is there in your statutory update not more than that it can be discussed in detail we can have lot of discussion but not required because how much is required for exam we will limit our discussion to that much only chalo <coughs> with effect from 1st january government had introduced a new scheme of remission of duties and taxes for eligible export of goods everyone listen to me very carefully whenever you import the goods from india all whenever you go ahead and export sorry whenever you go ahead and export the goods from india on your exported goods the tax which is there the indian taxes which are being charged should the indian taxes ka effect should not go on your exported goods otherwise your exported goods will become expensive in the international market now if a person is going ahead and exporting he would have gone ahead and got some remission of duty correct some duty drawback might be some duty drawback was already given to him okay now those things we are not talking about those are already given now for those taxes might be some indian vat was being charged might be some indian excise duty was being charged and for that so gst etc you get the input tax credit sir uh, whatever the import duty you had paid now you are going in and exporting duty drawback is given but for the indian taxes which is vat excise duty which is being charged in india some taxes were not being returned means the effect of tax was already still there on the exported goods government told on the exported goods government went ahead and understood okay on this exported goods this much is the indian tax ka effect which is still there so those indian tax ka effect in order to nullify it in order to remove it government went ahead and told this indian taxes ka we will go ahead and return it to you and government introduced r o d t e p scheme where this indian taxes will be returned to the exporter in the form of a percentage of their fob that's all everyone did you guys understand the basic of rodtp yes sir government is going ahead and telling whatever gst is there that to exporter will take the itc whatever gst paid on the goods which are being manufactured they will take the itc sir if the goods are being imported whatever the import duty was paid on the exported goods that duty drawback they will claim but if any indian taxes ka effect is there which is still there in the exported goods government ka policy is simple export the goods not the taxes and hence government went ahead and earlier introduced mea scheme where these taxes were being returned in the form of scrip now government is telling we will go ahead and give this taxes back in the form of r o d t e p that is why the name is remission of duties and taxes on exported product with effect from 1st january government had introduced a new scheme for remission of duties and taxes on exported product for eligible export of goods it is not on all export of goods only on eligible export theek hai 
RODT scheme is based on globally accepted principle. MEIS was not based on globally accepted principle and hence it was a problem. Now government is selling RODT scheme we have designed which is based on globally accepted, accepted principle that taxes and duties should not be exported and taxes levied or borne by the export on the exported product should either be exempted either you should exempt that goods i am going to export don't charge me only or if charged they will be remitted to the exporter means it will be returned to the exporter this scheme provides for remission of the amount in the form of duty credit scrape credited in the exporter's ledger account maintained under custom under the custom they have now told under section number 51 b if i am not wrong that we will have one e credit ledger and all these duties which we have to return to the exporter will be a percentage of the fob and we'll return it to him in the e credit ledger e credit ledger may if he has an amount whenever he imports something to pay the basic custom duty he can use it if he has some amount in the e credit ledger we will he can also transfer it to his friend and his friend can use it to pay his basic custom duty in customs this is the e credit ledger where basically the duty which the government has to give it back to you in the form of percentage will be put in your e credit ledger what is the objective of the scheme the objective of the scheme is to refund currently unrefunded taxes basically those taxes which are not being refunded now will be refunded as a percentage duties taxes levied at the center state and local level born on the exported product including prior stage cumulative indirect taxes on goods and services used in production in the exported product whatever duties etc you are you have borne it and it was not returned to you will be returned under rodtp scheme and such indirect tax or taxes levied in respect of distribution of the exported product means in the whole chain whatever the indirect tax effect is there to nullify government will give it give the taxes back to you in the form of percentage what is the silent feature of the scheme it seeks to refund to the exporter the central embedded central state and local duties that are not so far being rebated or refunded the scheme is just introduced so that whatever the tax effect is there can be nullified and it can be returned to the exporter next duty credit is issued in lieu of remission of any duty levy chargeable on any material used in manufacturing or processing of goods or for carrying out an operation on such goods in india that are exported export the goods not the taxes so those taxes which are which are being charged on the manufacturing might be some excise duties there which is not being returned to you might be some local taxes are there that will be returned where such duties are not exempted or not remitted or created under any other scheme in gst if you got a refund of itc then under this scheme will not be given any refund any incentive will not be given under this scheme against export of notified goods they will notify some goods under ftp those goods if you export they will give you the benefit under rodtp that is what is being told number two sir why are you teaching the silent feature exam may right some silent features of rodtp you should know it next value of said goods for calculation of duty credit baba this is very very important how will the amount which will be given to you as duty credit be calculated it will be allowed under this scheme shall be declared export fob of the said goods so if i am going ahead and exporting everyone if i am going ahead and exporting and i have declared the fob as 2 lakh rupees they will take 2 lakh or up to 1.5 time of the market price of the goods whichever is less for an example the indian market price of that goods is 1 lakh rupees 1.5 time means so fob is 2 lakh 1.5 time of the market value is 1.5 lakh so they will go ahead and use sir 1.5 lakh as the amount on which they will give you that percentage amount of duty credit so for an example 2% is being told 1.5 lakh ka 2% 1 lakh 50000 into 2% 3000 rupees they will put in your e credit ledger which is maintained under customs is everyone with me till here are you able to grasp what i am i telling is everyone able to grasp everything are you able to 
get it everyone quickly give me a heads up yes sir we are all able to get it till here chalo let's go ahead next so sir this becomes very important in your exam in your exam if they give you a question they will give you the declared fob is this amount the market price of the goods, goods is this amount sir what is the amount of duty credit that will be given so they will give you a percentage saying duty rodtp scheme mein this much is the percentage then you just go ahead and calculate on fob or 1.5 time of the market value whichever is lower of that the amount which is being told that's all very simple it is going to be next the refund is in the form of duty credit will be created in the e credit ledger under the custom automated system basically in your e credit ledger which is maintained under the ice gate ka website they will have uh, e credit ledger under section number 51b it is already there yes sir then so such duty shall be only used for payment of basic custom duty so what you can do with this amount which is created in your e credit ledger sir one minute you can use it to pay your basic custom duty or you can go ahead and transfer it to your other friends who are there and they can use it to pay their basic custom duty the duty credit are freely transferable credit can be transferred to other importers the rebate under this scheme shall not be available in respect of duties and taxes already exempted or remitted or credited might be any gst was paid by you you have already taken the itc on for that there is no rebate etc which will be given next eligibility all exporters of eligible rodtp export item so the item has to be notified as an rodtp item on if you are exporting that item then that percentage which is being told by the government will be given so for every item government has gone ahead and given a percentage if you are exporting that item you can go ahead and take the benefit of rodtp scheme reward rebate would be granted to eligible exporter at a notified percentage of fob with a value cap per unit of the exported product wherever required on the export of item however for certain export item a fixed quantum of rebate amount per unit may be notified so sir it will be percentage of your fob or 1.5 time yes or it can be sir one shirt 10 rupees only it can be a fixed amount which is being told government can go ahead and say your export of shirt you will get only 10 rupees so government can fix an amount also fixed quantum of rebate next rebate would be dependent on the realization of export proceed government will go ahead and give you the rebate now government will go ahead and give you the credit in your e credit ledger but make sure that you realize the foreign currency within the time limit as per fema if you don't realize the foreign currency within the time limit as per fema within the next 15 days deposit the amount with the government so for an example you could not realize the forex whatever rebate was given to you please give it back to the government otherwise government will start recovery always remember rebate would be a dependent on the realization of foreign ex export proceeds at the time of issue of rebate however rebate would be deemed to be never to be allowed in case of non receipt of sell proceed within the time limit allowed as per fema so within the time limit of fema if you don't get the amount of foreign currency because you have exported you should get forex that is why we are giving rebate but if you don't get the foreign currency whatever rebate was given to you please pay it back to the government within the next 15 days otherwise government will start recovery very important can be for your exam they can go ahead and tell you ineligible supplies or items or categories under rodtp what are the supplies which are ineligible under rodtp scheme you guys can read it let's read it quickly once sir following shall not be eligible in into account for calculating the entitlement under this scheme this scheme may when they are calculating they will not consider this following means on this the rodtp scheme ka benefit will not be given number 1 export of imported goods in same or substantially same form you got this mouse and you exported the mouse you did not do any manufacturing in india what indian taxes will be levied they are telling in this in this case just go and claim duty drawback etc please don't come for rodtp scheme next export through transhipment for an example one ship came from outside india theek okay? hai it unloaded the goods and the goods were again loaded in a separate ship and this ship went from india to outside india in this scenario might be it went to australia okay goods were being put in a ship and it was exported outside india but in such kind of export is there anything which is done in india it's just a transhipment the ship came unloaded the goods 
अनदर शिप में गुड्स आर लोडेड एंड टेकन फ्रॉम इंडिया आउटसाइड इंडिया इन दिस एक्सपोर्ट देर इज नो आर ओ डी टीपी स्कीम का बेनिफिट विच विल बी गिवेन टू यू नेक्स्ट एक्सपोर्ट प्रोडक्ट विच आर सब्जेक्ट टू मिनिमम एक्सपोर्ट प्राइस और एक्सपोर्ट ड्यूटी so sir if uh, any product which is there on which minimum export price is applicable or export duty is applicable so sir if export goods pay export duty is applicable on that scenario and all government is telling i am anyways discouraging those products to be exported by charging export duty still if you are going at an exporting pay export duty and i'll not give you any benefit also next products which are restricted or prohibited restricted product prohibited product still you are exporting government is telling for this baba for that you have to take permissions and you can go ahead and export for some products but government is selling rodtp scheme will not be given next supply of product made by dta unit to scz sir domestic tariff areas so scz me if you are supplying in that scenario can you claim rodtp no you are telling sir i will give to scz scz will supply outside india government is selling no rodtp scheme will be given supplies made by electronic hardware technology park software technology park all these are basically you know what happens all this uh, software technology park uh, all these people who are there whenever they procure there is no duty anyways now when they are going ahead and exporting for them there is no rodtp scheme even if they are going ahead and exporting no rodtp scheme because whenever they purchase etc you no know, anyways there is no duty which is being charged to them goods which have been taken into use after manufacturing <laughs> manufactured used in india and then exporting no rodtp scheme goods which are goods for which the electronic document in ice gate edi has not been generated always remember when you are filing your shipping bill at that time you have to go ahead and claim the rodtp ka amount which you want to claim if you don't file the claim in the ice gate ka website at the time of filing the shipping bill there is no there is no rodtp scheme ka benefit which will be given to you so export for which electronic document in ice gate edi has not been generated might be manual generation manually if goods are being exported manually means basically online filing of shipping bill etc was not done in that scenario there will be no rodtp scheme for rodtp scheme your shipping bill has to be filed electronically might be you have gone ahead and exported from a product which is not edi means manually you have gone ahead and file the shipping bill and export it in that scenario you will not get any rodtp ka benefit rodtp benefit ke liye you have to make your claim on the customs ka edi portal electronic data interchange portal products manufactured or exported availing benefit of notification number 32 basically this notification had gone ahead and told that whenever you import make the goods in india and export on import there will be no duty etc for those goods they have gone ahead and told so when you had imported if you had claimed the benefit of notification number 32 part 2000 1997 in that scenario there is no rodtp scheme which is given deemed export ka case mein there is no rodtp scheme products manufactured partly or wholly in warehouse sir you imported the goods into india you did not clear the goods you put them in the warehouse custom ka warehouse in the custom ka warehouse only you did the manufacturing and you exported outside india in that scenario they are going ahead and telling rodtp scheme will not be given for custom warehousing to manufacture in the custom warehousing etc little discussion i have done in the warehousing chapter uh, which is there on your youtube next goods for which claim of duty is not filed in the shipping bill or bill of export baba i have already told you when you are filing your shipping bill or bill of export you have to claim the rodtp dtp ka benefit if you don't claim no benefit given sir in the custom automated system product manufactured or exported in discharge of export obligation under advance authorization etc for them anyways they are given benefit so they are not given benefit of rodtp product manufactured or exported by 100% eou in terms of the provision of ftp or by any of the unit which is scz uh, this free trade zone etc for them anyways a lot of benefits are already being given by the government because they whenever they buy etc no there is no taxes so government is telling anyways you have not gone ahead and borne any taxes when you are going ahead and exporting rodtp ka benefit will be an additional benefit which we give to you because you have not gone ahead and borne any taxes ka uh, burden and hence government have told for you guys also there is no rodtp ka benefit in my opinion this point is very important how to calculate the rodtp ka value and uh, then 
this items which are ineligible is very important always remember always remember one thing they will go ahead and ask you my opinion they will ask you an rodt pay question uh, remission of duties and taxes on exported product the above one which is there no remission of center ros tcl scheme that scheme they have not gone ahead and told in the amendment material and hence i have gone ahead and deleted actually i should have deleted but by mistake the name has remained like this done sir harish says please requesting to upload the revision handwritten notes completely done uh, i'll go ahead and do one thing you go to rameshsunil.com rameshsunil.com free resources in free resources may 22 folder i'll upload this saying as uh, ca final amendment classroom running notes done harish Chalo, here we are done with RODTP, the customs, the FTP ka complete chart which is there, I have gone ahead and provided over here. FTP may amendment, FTP extended 2015-20, extended till 31st March 2022. So, here 31st March 2022, 31st March 2022. Then second chart, they, they, second chart may there is no amendment. Still, I have gone ahead and given the chart because there might be students who want to read FTP from the chart. So, I have given it. RODTP scheme which is there complete scheme I have gone ahead and written it down over here you can read this also you can go ahead and read from the material also all this uh, EOU ESTP schemes etc ka benefit has been extended till 31st March 31st March this is the small amendment over here done sir we will all read it we are all good boy and good girls foreign trade policy may one small paragraph which the ICI has gone ahead and inserted which I saw that you guys should read and go because again this can be a three marks small question which they can go ahead and ask. In my opinion RODTP scheme or this three marks should be asked. Okay. Chalo. Let's read. Principles of restriction and prohibition for import and export. Now people were going ahead and importing. People were going ahead and exporting. So they have gone ahead and put some principle saying you can't import this, you can't export this. All those principles for prohibition when they want to impose a restriction or a prohibition, what are the principles that should be followed? So they are telling principles for restriction and prohibition for import or export revised. It is being revised to be in line with the international agreement. India has international agreements. Now what they have gone ahead and done the principles on the basis of which you can say that this good cannot be imported or this goods cannot be exported. Those principles have been revised. And now ICI has also gone ahead and given those principles in your statutory update. So I have gone ahead and put the principles over here. These principles you will be reading at home. There is nothing for me to go ahead and explain. But still one line let me read it. With effect from 10th of August, principles of restriction and prohibition for import or export have been revised. Import and export related. When can you restrict and prohibit? What are the principles to restrict that had been revised? They have told DGFT may through a notification impose restriction or prohibition when on export of foodstuff or other essential product for pre prevention or relieving critical shortage. For an example, India may rice ka shortage is there. Now, if there is a critical shortage of rice in India, definitely the export of rice will be prohibited. So, whenever there is a critical, critical shortage, government can go ahead based on the principle. What principle? Critical shortage is there. I am imposing restriction. Sir, India may calculators are short. We are imposing the restriction. No, you can't do it. You have to see over here, export of foodstuff and other essential product for preventing or relieving critical shortages so these are basically the principles which the government will be going ahead and following i this is your self study the last page which is there self study kind of a page but at least remember five of them out of all of them remember at least five to six of them and go for an exam i will go ahead and close my amendment discussion over here congratulations people we are done with the complete amendment relating to gst customs and ftp over here everyone now listen to me very carefully the amendments notification circular which the ici had gone ahead and told in their may 22 material that i have gone ahead and covered over here which are applicable for your exam finance act 2021 is not completely applicable for your exam and hence i have not gone ahead and done the complete uh, uh 
discussion whatever amendments done by the finance act 2021 which are effective only has been discussed circulars and notification which are given by the ici has been discussed in the statutory update material additionally i have tried to discuss some of the important amendments and circulars and notifications also barring this there are some more amendments which are being there but ici in their may 22 material or in the statutory update material have not gone ahead and considered them by chance before the exam if in the rtp or anywhere they go ahead and release any statutory update material and tell anything additional don't worry about it i will still go ahead and add those to your amendment means i will go ahead and release one might be amendment material and an amendment short video but don't worry about it i don't think so much any more amendments should be released even if they release i have gone ahead and covered the most important ones which they can go ahead and still cover right everyone but i will go ahead i will go ahead and stop my discussion over here number one the statutory update material is available in rameshsoni.com free resources rameshsoni.com free resources mein you can go the late fee ka chart which is there late fee ka chart sir, you can go to rameshsoni.com free resources may 22 folder late fee ka chart i will upload over there and also this handwritten notes which are there i'll upload over there you guys can download from there i hope you guys enjoyed the amendment video please watch the warehousing ka amendment which is already uploaded on my youtube channel right everyone yes sir done any other thing which is there please tell me chalo done sir i hope you guys enjoyed the amendment lecture please 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 one request one request is from all of you is to practice lot of question answers i have seen students study a lot but don't practice question answers i request all of you guys to please practice question answers properly if you see over here the index will serve the index will serve as an uh last minute summary for you where you can go ahead and revise whatever i have discussed in the class because after every amendment whatever the crux was there is already there in your index right everyone you can use that for revision purposes done sir advance ruling notification is there for may 22 baba advance ruling is applicable for your exam advance ruling under gst is applicable for your exam there is no more amendment etc which is there right everyone i'll go ahead and stop my discussion over here sir abc analysis abc analysis in april exam is in may as of now you can follow the old abc analysis it is already there in free resources crm sony free resources it is already there harish i need to have a look at it chalo anything else anyone no sir we are all done i would like to no no it is not applicable finance act whatever amendments are applicable for your november 22 exam those amendments i'll be releasing later november 22 finance act may whatever amendment become effective for november 22 we'll discuss later for may 22 this discussion is there chalo take care everyone i will stop the video over here please like the video do subscribe to the channel revision video starts from revision starts from 10th of march today was a detailed amendment class along with the revision i'll talk about the revision amendments but not in detail we'll be quickly revising the amendments right everyone i'll see you guys in the revision class which starts on 10th of march morning Yes, everyone. Morning two hours and evening two hours. It is going to be for Hindi. Yes, revision video. Revision starts from tenth of March. Chalo, bye, guys. Take care.